home of free speech. Radio you won't hear anywhere else. Ian Lee, Play Talk UK. Mansfield Park, a novel in three volumes by Jane Austen. Volume one, chapter one. About 30 years ago, Miss Maria Ward of Huntingdon, with only £7,000, had the good luck to captivate Sir Thomas Bertram of Mansfield Park in the county of Northampton and to be thereby raised to the rank of a baroner's lady with all the comforts and consequences of a handsome house and large income. All Huntingdon exclaimed on the greatness of the match and her uncle, the lawyer himself, allowed her to be at least £3,000 short of any equitable claim to it. She had two sisters to be benefited by her elevation, and such of their acquaintances thought Miss Ward and Miss Frances quite as handsome as Miss Maria did not scruple to predict their marrying with almost equal advantage. But there certainly are not so many men of large fortune in the world, as there are pretty women to deserve them. Miss Ward, at the end of half a dozen years, found herself obliged to be attached to the Reverend Mr Norris, a friend of her brother-in-law with scarcely any private fortune. And Miss Frances fared much worse. Yet Miss Ward's match, indeed, when it came to the point, was not contemptible. Sir Thomas being happily able to give his friend an income in the living of Mansfield, and Mr and Mrs Norris began their career of conjugal felicity with very little less than a thousand a year. But Miss Frances married, in the common phrase, to disoblige her family, and by fixing on a lieutenant of marines without education, fortune or connections, did it very thoroughly. She could hardly have made a more untoward choice. Sir Thomas Bertram had interest, which, from principle as well as pride, from a general wish of doing right and a desire of seeing all that were connected with him in situations of respectability, he would have been glad to exert for the advantage of Lady Bertram's sister. But her husband's profession was such as no interest could reach, and before he had time to devise any other method of assisting them, an absolute breach between the sisters had taken place. It was the natural result of the conduct of each party, such as a very imprudent marriage almost always produces. To save herself from usual remonstrance, Mrs Price never wrote to her family on the subject till actually married. Lady Bertram, who was a woman of very tranquil feelings and a temper remarkably easy and indolent, would have contented herself with merely giving up her sister, thinking no more of the matter. But Mrs Norris had a spirit of activity, which could not be satisfied till she'd written a long and angry letter to Fanny, to point out the folly of her conduct and threaten her with all its possible ill consequences. Mrs Price, in her turn, was injured and angry, and an answer which comprehended each sister in its bitterness and bestowed such very disrespectful reflections on the pride of Sir Thomas as Mrs Norris could not possibly keep to herself, put an end to all intercourse between them for a considerable period. Their homes were so distant and the circles in which they moved so distinct as almost to preclude the means of ever hearing of each other's existence during the eleven following years, or at least to make it very wonderful to Sir Thomas that Mrs Norris should ever have it in her power to tell them, as she now and then did in an angry voice, that Fanny had got another child. By the end of eleven years, Mrs Price could no longer afford to cherish pride or resentment or to lose one connection that might possibly assist her. A large and still increasing family, and husband disabled for active service, but not the less equal to company and good liquor, and a very small income to supply their wants, made her eager to regain the friend she had so carelessly sacrificed. And she addressed, addressed Lady Bertram in a letter which spoke so much contrition and despondence, such a superfluity of children, and such a want of almost everything else as could not but dispose them all to a reconciliation. She was preparing for her ninth lying in, and after bewailing the circumstance and imploring their countenance as sponsors to the expectant child, she could not conceal how important she felt they might be to the future maintenance of the eight already in being. Her eldest was a boy of ten years old, a fine-spirited fellow who longed to be out in the world, but what could she do? Was there any chance of his being hereafter useful to Sir Thomas in the concerns of his West Indian property? No situation would be beneath him. Or what did Sir Thomas think of Woolwich? Or how could a boy be sent out to the East? Good evening, my name's Ian Lee. I'm here on Play Talk this evening for the next two hours. Uh, and I thought we would celebrate the uh, magic and the beauty of one of the greatest novels ever written in the English language. It's Jane Austen's Mansfield Park, a book that I read uh, when I was at school. I was at four, 14 years old, didn't quite fully understand it. So I thought we'd uh, look at it now. If you know anything about it and want to discuss it with us, 01243 55 61 61 is the phone number. Email uh, is talk at playradiouk.com. Skype is play.radio.uk. We've got a caller on line one. Hello, line one. You said Fanny. Yes, that's the young lady's name in Mansfield Park. 
Hello? Okay, it's going to be like that, is it? Is it? We're not so... Trying to do uh, sensible. Which which microphone are you on, uh, Fiona? You're I'm on, on number three. Number three, there we yeah. go. Okay, you're a fan. Uh, oh, look, we've got... Uh, okay, listen, that's here. So let's go. Uh, yes, we've got a call on the Skype. Hello, Yvonne. No, nope, oh, they've bottled it. Okay, well, there we go. So we're going to be discussing this for the next two hours. I'm here tomorrow as well. We'll see how far we get with this. We've, I've got great expectations for tomorrow. If uh, We've got a caller on the Skype. Hello, who's that? Hello, I can hear you breathing. Oh, okay. It's, um... Have I got the right fader there? Okay, we'll just carry on with the, uh... 01243 55 61 61 is the phone number. Play.radio.uk is the, uh... Hello, line one. We're, you're on the air, yes. I can tell you something about that book. Okay, yep. It's a load of wank. Okay, that's, um... Okay, that's, uh, good. Line two, you're, line two, you're on the wireless. Oh, bad boy, what you gonna do? Yeah. What you gonna do when they come for you? Oh, bad boy. <laughs> Okay, let's uh, try line six. Line, line, uh, line three, you're on the wireless. Hello, it's Yvonne. Alan Caddy gives me love. Okay, right. Um, <laughs> are we going to get any sensible calls this evening, or is it all going to be uh, just people dicking around? It's, uh... Tommy Boyd is uh, inviting mm-hmm. me to come. Hello? What was that? Hello? Yes, hello? OK. Tommy Boyd's invited me to come on the station tonight and tomorrow, for to, to 9 till 11, tonight and tomorrow. I'm not getting paid for this. I was told I could do whatever I wanted to do, so I brought uh, Jane's Mansfield, uh, Jane uh, Austen's Mansfield Park. If you want to phone up and discuss it, uh, and maybe explain some of the intricacies that uh, I've, I've missed a bit. Is it a book you've read at all, Fiona? No, it's not. OK, I read this uh, for my, uh, I guess it was my GCSE. I didn't understand it at all, so, um, uh, oh, we've, got a, we've got a call on the Skype there. Hello, yes, you're, you're on the air. Hello? It's Yvonne Rhodes there is uh, <laughs> struggling to get through. It's a, it's a real shame. Let's go to uh, the call on the phone here. Let's go to line one. Line one, uh, you're on the air. Peter Chapman sucked off a squirrel. OK, right, that's... Um... <laughs> The letter was not unproductive. It re-established peace and kindness. Sir Thomas sent friendly advice and professions. Lady Bertram dispatched money and baby linen, and Mrs Norris wrote the letters. Such were its immediate effect, and within a 12-month, a more important advantage to Mrs Price resulted from it. Mrs no- Hello, is there someone on the Skype? Yes, there is. Oh, it's Fat Steve. Hello, Fat Steve. Can I just Hello. finish this paragraph? Sure. Otherwise, I'll lose my place. Uh, Mrs Norris was often observing to the others that she could not get her poor sister and her family out of her head, and that much as they had all done for her, she seemed to be wanting to do more. And at length, she could not but own it to be her wish, that poor Mrs Price should be relieved from the charge and expense of one child entirely out of her great number. What if they were among them to undertake the care of her eldest daughter, a girl now nine years old, of an age to require more attention than her poor mother could possibly give? The trouble and expense of it to them would be nothing compared with the benevolence of the action. Lady Bertram agreed with her instantly. I think we can't do better, said she. Let us send for the child. Steve. Yes, um, excellent reading, by the way. Thank you very much. Um, I thought we could discuss um, how the novel embraces the ar- aristocratic social system. Okay, yeah. And, the, you, you know, the concept of primogeniture. Yeah. Uh-huh. Explain uh, primogeniture for those who don't understand it. The firstborn child of an aristocratic family inherits the entire parent's estate. Mm-hmm. Okay. And the male child in general. Okay, which is something, of course, that's being discussed at the moment in regards to the royal family here. Wow. Yes, wow. You see, it all ties in. There's not just randomness to uh, to this. Yes. So, Steve, what are your thoughts on it? Have you read the book? Yes, yes. And um, the thing I remember the most is, you know, the eldest son who inherited everything was completely useless. Yeah. Uh-huh. And he was like a gambler and a drunk. Yeah. And... Uh, it's a huge book, too. It's, it's a huge book. I'm going to get as far as I can with it tonight. I've got, uh, I'm here tomorrow as well, 9 till 11, so I'm going to try and do more. Uh, if I'm honest, Steve, I haven't read it since I was about 14 years old, 15 years old. I didn't understand a lot of it that time around. So I'm hoping that by reading it out loud and by having uh, people like you calling in who do obviously understand it, that it, it will be explained to me. I mean, it's, it's beautifully written, isn't it? Yeah, and it's, even, it's very funny at times. Uh, there are jokes in it, are there? Yeah. Okay, we've got a call. Uh, we've got a, uh, a, li- a call on the phone as well. Hello, who's that on line one? Fat Steve, get off the mic, man. 
OK, sorry about that, Steve. I'm just going <laughs> to cut that off. If you, if we, 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 listen, I, I know everyone's thinking, oh, Ian's coming in, it's all going to be straight to air, and it's all going to be crazy and dicking around. It, it's, you know, this... Mr Boyd has uh, asked me to come in, uh, do what I want to do. I'm not getting paid any money for this. It took me two and a half hours to drive down here tonight, so uh, I'm doing what I want to do, which is read this book which is what I would be doing if I were at home. 01243 55 61 61. Steve, you haven't got a copy of it there, have you? No. Well, oh. I, actually, I do have one upstairs. Um, if you, hey, listen, I if you want to get it and call back later on and, re and read along with me, you'll be more than welcome. Do a little twosome, yeah. That would um, be fantastic, Steve. Make... Excellent. Have a great show. OK, Steve, we'll speak to you later on. Ta-ta. There -ta. Oh, we go. What a nice gentleman. Have we got another call on the, the Skype there? Let's see. Uh, with this. Oh, Hello, yes, you're on the air. It's Mr. Evil. Ha, ha, ha. Hello, Mr. Evil. I found you. Yes. So you'll read the book? Yes. It's uh, Jane Austen's Mansfield Park. You should read the Evil Way book. Mm okay. It's a good book. I recommend it. Okay, well, I'm not going to do that tonight, but thank you very much for your call. You're welcome. Good night. <laughs> Oh, one two four three fifty five sixty one sixty one is uh, the telephone number. If you want to give us a call, and it's Skype uh, is uh, play dot radio dot uk. I'll carry on with. Uh, the... Oh, we've got another call there. Hello. You called me. No, is that Mr. Evil again? You called me. Yes. Yeah, no, well, we didn't mean to. So we're gonna we're gonna hang up on you now, rather rudely. Goodbye. Yes. Goodbye. Okay. It's not. We've we've got quite. A... We're on page seven, and. Um... There are 439 pages to go. So, uh, if you if you are if you are calling in, um, j j you know, try and keep it short and, and to the point. Yes, Wayne. Hello. Hello. Yes, y yes. Why you're... don't you go and read the Great Gatsby? Hello. Can you hear me now? Yes, I can. Why, why don't you read the Great Gatsby, big thief? Okay, because I'm reading Maxwell Park. Okay, please, please move the phone. <laughs> Sir Thomas could not give so instantaneous and unqualified a consent. He debated and hesitated. It would be a serious charge. A girl so brought up must be adequately provided for, or there would be cruelty instead of kindness in taking her from her family. He thought of his own four children, of his two sons, of cousins in love, and, uh... Now, here's an interesting thing. I don't know what that means. And see. Have you seen that? That's... That's a strange little, uh, where is it? That to, to put in there. Okay, no, we'll, uh, we'll read it. I'm not sure. But no sooner had he deliberately begun to state his objections than Mrs. Norris interrupted him with a reply to them all, whether stated or not. Hello, you're on the air. Uh, hello, Ian. Hello, yes. Hi, it's Gary from Catford. Hello, Gary from Catford. Hello there. Uh, I, I've stepped away from, from normal convention this evening. I thought I'd, I'd call on topic uh, okay. and say that Mansfield Park is one of my favourite uh, Jane Eyre novels. OK. Jane, well, sorry, Jane Eyre. <laughs> what am I thinking? Jane Austen, yes. Uh, particularly, I like the character of Tom uh, yeah. and his, his, his irresponsible gambling. Yep. Uh, uh, I, I think it's a good theme running throughout the book about the sort of, you know, the risk-taking that he does, mm -hmm. not only in life, but also, obviously, with his, his ill-gotten gains. Yeah, OK. okay. Um, well, hey, uh, Gary, calm down. Don't spoil the story for everyone. We've not got there yet. No, I don't, obviously don't want to give away... No, please don't. ...anything there. But, but obviously, the, the relationship with, uh, with Tom and Mr. Gates... Yep. Do, do you think that's a metaphor for something? What are you, what are you saying, Gary? Well, I, 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 suggesting, you know, Tom and, and, and Mr. Gates may be good to gambled with their affections at times. Well, now, uh, you, the, the way you're saying that, you're, it sounds like you're implying there's a homosexual relationship there. Well, I'm asking the question. I've, I've never interpreted it that way, but some have in, in literary groups okay. that I've been... Whereabouts, whereabouts in the book is that? And we'll, we'll flag it up as we approach it. I can't remember exactly. Uh, okay, we're, we're, know, we're on page seven. seven. Well, I, I know at times that yep. they, 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 they put people... <laughs> they're a bit with Elizabeth, isn't there? They're a bit with that yep. character in okay. there, but I can't... Yeah. Okay. Well, we'll uh, you, have you got a copy of it there? Because I'm, I'm, you know, if anyone wants to phone up and read along with me, they're more than welcome to. I, I, I'm sure I can. I, I, let me just uh, let me just reach. There, that's all I've got. So it's his server. Copy. You got it there, Gary? No. So I've got quite, quite a long way to go in the book. Yeah. So I could okay. read you something from. Um, Read you something from the Observer Sport Monthly. No, if you want. listen, Gary. We're going to move on. If we can just cut Gary off there, if you want. I'm going to take. We've got a couple of calls here. Let's go to uh, line one. Line one. You're on the wireless. Hello, Ian. It's uh, Steve Allen from LBC. Hello, Steve. Uh, do you, you Jane Austen night here at uh, Play Talk? 
I was just wondering if you could come in and do a paper review tomorrow morning. We're a bit short. Um, it, th- listen, Steve, uh, it will be a pleasure. I'm gonna, uh, I'll, I'll talk to you later on. I'll, I'll text you. Thank you very much. Good, Good night. night. OK, let's go to line. Uh, we are looking for calls uh, about this book, if please. If you're just calling up to, to Fanny about, then don't. Yes, Hello? line five, you're on the wireless. Hello? Hello? Yeah, yeah, hi. Is, is that Catherine Cat? Hang on a second, line five. Hello? Ian? Yes? Yes? How are you, son? All right? Yep, very well. Oh, it, seems like, it seems like Gary has found out how to use Wikipedia. Is he just reading it from Wikipedia? Well, I'd imagine so. I don't think he'd read a book oh, like that. <laughs> Uh, he's from South London, isn't he? Take this seriously. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, what's your view on the book? Have you just phoned up to grass Gary up? No, I, I, I don't need to do that. I was suggesting, yeah. why don't you do a book like Lady Chatley's Lover? Because, like, I had my first orgasmic experience. Oh, go, get lost, get <laughs> lost. We've got a call on the Skype. Hello, Skype caller. Yeah, hi, is that Catherine Cat? No, she was, she was just on. Oh, I was wondering if you could help me. Um, when I go for a wee, I'll get a bit of a pain. Yeah, we're not, not in... Tra- uh, <laughs> This is absolute bullshit. My dear Sir Thomas, I perfectly comprehend you and do justice to the generosity and delica- uh, delicacy of your notion- notions, which are indeed are quite of a piece with your general conduct. And I entirely agree with you in the main as to the propriety of doing everything one could by way of providing for a child one had in a manner taken into one's own hands. And I'm sure I should be the last person in the world to withhold my might upon such an occasion. Having no children of my own, who should I look to in any little matter I may ever have to bestow but the children of my sisters? Uh, Hello, who's this? Uh, Just quickly before you go... Uh, Can I just uh, finish this paragraph? Well, no, I was interested about... Can I'm I, out with that, yes, chat with a wee oh, pain, because I get that too. Oh, God. <laughs> and I'm sure Mr Norris is too just, but you know, I am a woman of few words and professions. Do not let us be frightened from a good deed by a trifle. Give a girl an education and introduce her properly into the world, and ten to one, but she has the means of settling well without farther expense to anybody. Hello, line, uh, line one, you're on the wireless. Hello? Oh, they've got... Uh... Out. Okay. A niece of ours, Sir Thomas, I must say, or l- at least of yours, would not grow up in this neighbourhood without many advantages. I don't say she would be so handsome as her cousins, I dare say she would not, but she would be introduced into the society of this country under such very favourable circumstances, as, in all human probability, would get her a credible establishment. You are thinking of your sons, but do not you know that of all things upon earth that is the, that is the least likely to happen, brought up as they would be, always together like brothers and sisters? It is morally impossible. I never knew an instance of it. It is, in fact, the only sure way of providing against the connection. Suppose her a pretty girl and seen by Tom or Edmund for the first... That's the first time Tom's mentioned it. Tom or Edmund for the first time seven years hence, and I dare say there would be mischief. The very idea of her having been suffered to grow up at a distance from us all in poverty and neglect would be enough to make either of the dear, sweet-tempered boys in love with her. But breed her up with them from this time and suppose her even to have the beauty of an angel, she will never be more to either than a sister. So already the the point about the relationship that's going to be pending with Tom is being discussed here. It's like, if you do it this way, there won't be a relationship of a sexual kind. Mm-hmm. But if you do it the other way, it's going gonna, it's gonna to go off the rails. Yes, line one, you're on the wireless. Hello, is that Ian Lee? Yes, it is. Yes, I think it's a disgrace that you would do a show on a racist station. Absolute Radio should have cut off David Jason before he was able to tell that awful joke. Yes, so the, the David Jason Pakistani joke that was told on the uh, Who's Colin Christians. Yes, uh, I, I did, we're not discussing that now. <laughs> uh, let's try line... Um, we've got in the papers, that. Uh, David Jason came on and told a joke about a Pakistani. <gasps> yeah, the Del Boy. Who'd have thought? Line, uh, line two, you're on the wireless. I've got a dirty. Uh, okay. Line, line yeah. three, you're on the wireless. Oh, yeah, can I just pass a message on to that Johnny, that West Country fella? Yes. I, I didn't get it from Wikipedia. I looked it up on books <laughs> at westcountry.com. <laughs> uh, listen, are you... Are you all sort of, you know, hanging around on the internet, you know, typing in, let's take the piss out of this? Is that what you're doing? No, no, no. That, that, we haven't been to that website in ages. Well, can you not call in any more, please? Whatever. Thank you. Let's try line one. Line one, you're on the wireless. Fanny Price is an inbred. Hello, Ian. <sighs> yes, you're the sc- a Skype call from Thomas Horn. Hello, hello, Thomas. Hello, hello Ian. Yes, hello. What are the topics to tonight's show? Yeah, we... Hello? Hello? Can, hello? Yes, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Okay, then why do you keep saying hello? <laughs> Go in. Yeah. We're not, 
not doing any topics tonight. It's not like the normal show I do on the other radio station. It's not that hit when I was here last time and we just turned oh, okay. the faders up and everyone came on and swore and twatted around and stuff. Tonight, I'm trying to drag this station up by its intellectual bootstraps, OK? If you want racists and prozies, you're not going to get them on this show, all right? Tonight, we're discussing the magic yeah. of Jane Austen's Mansfield Park. Yeah, OK. It's a book! Jesus, is that it? Is he going to say anything else? Anything else, Thomas? I don't need many birds. No, of course you don't, because you're an idiot. If you don't want to call in and uh, talk about this properly, uh, play.radio.uk is the, the Skype. You know that, because you're listening to this. 01243 55 61 61 is the telephone number. Line, uh, line one, you're on the wireless. Hello there, Ian. How Hello. Yeah, very well. Good, good, good. It's, uh, it's Aaron from the, uh, from the Sunday Roast. How are you doing, bud? Yeah, very well, thank you. Good, good. I just thought I'd pop along and add a little decorum to uh, the yeah. proceedings. Thank you very much. Good man. Um, so, we're talking about Mansfield Park, yeah? Yeah, we are. Right. I've never read it. Um, have you got any Janet and John? <laughs> <laughs> now, li that, li that line is flashing there. What does that mean? No, that's not us. That's not us? No. It doesn't mean we're in trouble? No. Okay. Only when the next one flashes, we're in trouble. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, God, that's the trouble. Do I have to take breaks and stuff here? Oh, yeah. When? When? <laughs> 20 past. Oh, we've, we've missed it, then? Nah, it's all right. Well, I, shall I press a button or something? And... Go for it. Which, well, you say that. Which, I'm the next, big one. The next button. Big next one, okay, yeah. that there, then. PlayRadioUK.com is dedicated to providing you with a fully interactive website and music service. Choose from 13 stations playing all kinds of music 24 hours a day. Find answers to your technical questions. Podcast your favourite shows. Download content to your mobile phone. Interact with other users in our forum. Buy music from your favourite artists and find out who's on when and what we're up to. PlayRadioUK.com Internet radio your way. Wolfman Jack, only on Play Gold UK. You're listening to the Wolfman Jack Show. I don't know what I'd do without you. You and I just tasting each other's love, just... Knowing each other's soul, just feeling each other's emotions. Man, Jack. Oh, you thought she was digging you, but she was digging me. We got the Wolfman, Jack. That's all the Wolfman. Wolfman Jack, Fridays from 6 p.m. UK time, only on Play Goals UK. Barack Obama says to the Iranians, hey, let's talk and be friends. Iran says we're not developing nuclear weapons. I'm getting deja vu all over again. Are we about to invade Iran? I'm Tommy Boyd. Every weekday afternoon on Play Talk UK from 5 until 7 UK time, we talk about the big issues facing planet Earth. Play Talk UK. Ian Lee. There is a great deal of truth in what you say, replied Sir Thomas, and far be it from me to throw any fanciful impediment in the way of a plan which will be so consistent with the relative situations of each. I only meant to observe that it ought not be lightly engaged in, and that to make it really serviceable to Mrs. Price and credi creditable to ourselves, we must secure to the child or consider ourselves engaged to secure to her hereafter. As circumstances may arise, the provision of a gentlewoman, if no such establishment should offer, as you are so sanguine in expecting. I thoroughly understand you, cried Mrs. Norris. You're everything that is generous and considerate, and I'm sure we shall never disagree on this point. Whatever I can do, as you well know, I am always ready enough to do for the good of those I love. And though I could never feel for this little girl the hundredth part of the regard I bear your own dear children, nor consider her in any respect so much my own, I should hate myself if I were capable of neglecting her. Is not she a sister's child? And could I bear to see her want while I had a bit of bread to give her? My dear Sir Thomas, with all my faults, I have a warm heart, and, poor as I am, would rather deny myself the, necess ne excuse me, the ne necessaries of life than do an ungenerous thing. So, if you are not against it, I will write to my poor sister tomorrow and make the proposal, and as soon as matters are settled, I will engage to get the child to Mansfield. You shall have no trouble about it. My own trouble, you know, I never regard. I will send Nanny to London on purpose, and she may have a bed at her cousin, the Sadler's, and the child be appointed to meet her there. They may easily get her from Portsmouth to town by the coach, under the care of any creditable person that may chance to be going. I dare say there is always some reputable tradesman's wife or other going up. Except to the attack on Nanny's cousin, Sir Thomas no longer made any objection, and a more respectable, though less economical, rendezvous being accordingly substituted, everything was considered as settled, and the pleasures of so benevolent a scheme were already enjoyed. 
The division of gratifying sensations ought not, in strict justice, to have been equal, for Sir Thomas was fully resolved to be the real and consistent patron of the selected child, and Mrs Norris had not the least intention of being at any expense whatever in her maintenance. As far as walking, talking and the contriving reeks, she was thoroughly benevolent, and nobody knew better how to dictate liberality to others. But her love of money was equal to her love of directing, and she knew quite as well how to save her own as to spend that of her friends. Having marrow, married on a narrower income than she had been used to look forward to, she had from the first fancied a very strict line of economy necessary. And what was begun as a matter of prudence soon grew into a matter of choice, as an object of that needful solicitude which there were no children to supply. Had there been a family to provide for, Mrs Norris might never have saved her money, but having no care of that kind, there was nothing to impede her frugality or lessen the comfort of making a yearly addition to an income which they'd never lived up to. Under this infatuating principle, counteracted by no real affection for her sister, it was impossible for her to aim at more than the credit of projecting and arranging so expensive a charity. Though perhaps she might so little know herself as to walk home to the parsonage, parsonage after this conversation in the happy belief of being the most liberal-minded sister and aunt in the world. This is Ian Lee on Play Talk UK. Uh, i here 9 till 11 tonight and tomorrow. Uh, and I thought we would discuss Jane Austen's Mansfield Park. If you want to give us a call, 01243 55 61 61. We've got a call on... Uh... I have a text message for you from... Okay. Oh? Okay. And they've, they've texted into the wrong, uh, the wrong Nine. number. Okay. So we've got a call on the Skype. We? Hello, uh, let's go to the Skype. Hello. Uh, hello. You're on the air. Hi, Ian, it's Barry. It's... Hi, Ian, it's Barry. Hello, Barry. Barry. Barry? Show's a bit shit tonight. Show's a bit shit tonight, okay. isn't it? It's a sound bo- it's a soundboard, isn't it? Yeah. Okay. Six from this phone. Oh, no, this <laughs> Just is... to repeat that <laughs> number. No, don't. <laughs> <laughs> Have we got any the, the Skype emails or emails or anything like that that's yep. sort of worth? I'm just going to swap mics. Oh. Oh, okay. What's, have, I, have I turned the wrong mic up? No, hang no, on. No. Oh, yeah, you do, you're just moving I'm around just the moving. studio. Okay. Yeah. Now you're Fiona, aren't you? But can I call you Jane? <laughs> Why do you want to call me Jane? Just because the Jane Austen vibe and uh, you look like a Jane, and it just kind of fits in with the vibe. And also, that's a name that keeps popping up in my head, and I will say Jane at some point. Okay. It's, it's, it's easier if we just accept I'm going to get it wrong, get it wrong consistently. Fine. I'm that's, happy I'm with sure Jane. Happy with that. That's great. So. Yeah. I have you to got... say, you do that reading very well. Thank you, yes, I've been reading since the age of 17, so I, I can, I, I certainly can do it. You've got, uh, you've got a message there, I wouldn't bother with, with Barry Bumcock again, it's, uh, a nonsense, yes. Okay, okay. right, okay. let's go for, yeah, we've had a Skype message from Happy Tree. Yep. When reading a book, what I'd like, what I like to do is open it randomly in the yeah. middle and read the first couple of paragraphs my eyes fall on. Yeah. Plunged into the heart of the narrative with a... With nary a merry notion. Oh, okay. Of what is going on. I like to imagine in what context the words could be placed. Okay. Then I begin at the beginning and at some point come to the passage I already good. read. Yeah. It's a nice comparison to make the real situation and backstory of the piece and what I had originally imagined it would be like. When I did this with Mansfield Park, I thought it was about a gay naturist resort. Do you know, that's quite an interesting way of reading books, because we all do the conventional, well, it's, well, some, well, most of us do, we start at the beginning. Do you ever do that thing where you go to a bookshop or a library? Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> go on. That was it, that was the question. <laughs> that was the question. Yes, you I do. do. You do, yes. okay. But sometimes, some people do that thing where they look at the, they go to the last page of the book and just go... No, I don't like that. It's not for me. Do you, you, ever, do you ever do that? Do you know, I'm not very good with reading books. What do, you, what do you mean you're not very good with reading books? Because I'm quite an impatient person. Right. So I haven't really got the patience to sit down with a whole novel. Well, I want to know what's going to happen but, now. <laughs> but even with films, you have to have patience and wait. You're not going to get it instantly. It's no, gonna... no, that's why I don't go to cinema very often either. So you don't read books... <laughs> You don't watch films. Take a break magazine, is it? That's... My husband tried to murder me, so I cut his balls off. That's where it is, is it? Something like that. Okay. Well, you're gonna... Well, you don't need to... You don't need to do anything with this. I mean, you can read, can't you? Of course I can read, you can... yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. Not everybody can. No? No. Stupid people can't. And those with a condition. True. Uh, we've got a call. It's got a line, uh, two. Line two, you're on the wireless. Hello, Ian. Interesting that you should be with Victor Huligana here. Interesting yes. to hear you talking about Jane Austen's Mansfield Park. Yep. One of my favourite works by Jane Austen. Yep. 
certainly the most complex of the books what she wrote. Yes. But the actual life of Penny herself is a little bit of fairy story. For me, most interesting is Mary and Henry Crawford when they enter yep. and bring in this um, influence of London, the capital city, what often comes up in Jane Austen novels as the influence of debauchery of yep. the rural idyll. And if I remember correctly, the, the London is, is presented as being very debauched and very decadent and evil and naughty and bad, isn't it? It is. I was wondering if you could read some of that bit. Well, yeah, I will do. Uh, wh wh what page is it? Oh, I'd have to look it up. I've got my Penguin edition. OK, well, I'm, um, I'm, I'm your Penguin Classics, yes. When, when Sir Thomas actually goes away, that's yep. when they appear, like when the lawgiver in yep. Mansfield Park... OK, again, appears, don't then all ruin it. Hell is let loose. Yeah, don't ruin it for everybody who's, who's listening, because a lot of people, I know oh, that uh, Jane here is keen to, to get to the <laughs> get to that point naturally. OK. Do you know what page? Well, um, I'd have to really look it up a little bit. OK, well, do you want to call us back later on when you know? Yeah. yeah, good. OK. <laughs> Line two, you're on the wireless. Good evening. Good evening. Well, you, you should give up your stand-up career and take up a career in reading out audio books. Well, do you know what? I'm not being funny. I'm, can I get a CD of the show tonight and take this back with me? Because this would be quite handy to give to my agent and stuff. Yeah, of course say. you can. It's, uh, yes, it's, it's not a bad idea. Who is this on the line? It's Clarky in Dartford. Hello, Clarky. Are you a fan of Jane Austen? Um, I, I prefer Steve Austen, but... Oh, dickhead. <laughs> Line one, you're on the wireless. Hello, it's size more a tear. Yes. And I only like novels about death and destruction. Yes. Okay. So. What do they want? <laughs> what do they want me to do? You know, what well, I don't. What do they want me to? Do? You know, I've got the. <clears throat> I'm enjoying your reading. Thank you. Thank you, Jane. And I have a very squeaky chair. I didn't know that was your chair. <laughs> Lost my place now. <laughs> yes, line one, you're on the wireless. Hello, that wasn't the real size morgue. Death and... Oh, fuck <laughs> off! <laughs> <clears throat> Lost my place. I've had a message from yes. Robert. Yes. Saying, so, lucky old son, what do you reckon... Any good? I think Midnight is oh. Another Day is yeah. a great song. It's a Brian Wilson album. It's brilliant. OK. OK, we've, we, I've lost my place. <clears throat> um, so I'm going to have to start again. Chapter one. And this is your fault. About 30 years ago, Miss Maria Ward of Huntingdon, with only £7,000, had the good luck to captivate Sir Thomas Bertram of Mansfield Park in the county of Northampton, and to be thereby raised to the rank of a baronet's lady, with all the comforts and consequences uh, of a handsome house and large income. All hunting... Hello? Uh, hello there, yes. I, I wonder if I could speak to somebody in authority. Uh, well, uh, I guess that's you, Jane. <laughs> yeah. OK. Jane, when, when, when the blooming hell is Ian Lee coming on? This is, this is Ian Lee. You said he was reading a book. Yes, uh... But, but seriously, I could buy a book in the shop. Yes, you could buy a book in the shop, but what we're having is an, a shared experience of exploring uh, some of the most beautiful uh, words ever written in the English language. Yes, they're quite complex, you've got to work at it, but we're sharing that experience and discussing it together. But it's hurting my head. Oh. These long... Line two, you're on the wireless. Hello? Right, this is it, is it? This is it, is it? I'm reading Jane Austen. And the best that someone can do is phone up and make fart noises down the phone. That's the best that Play Talk has to offer. Anything useful on the Skype chat now? Stephen says, uh, tell everyone to fuck off and carry on with the reading. Mm, thank you, Stephen. Hello, who's this good on the chat? Yes. Hey, it's Brad Steve. Brad Steve, good to have you back on board, fella. Um, I remembered where you were, so um, if you want me to take over for a little while... Uh, yeah, please do. We'll, we'll play... Yeah, go on. OK, when the subject was brought forward again, her views were more fully explained, and in reply to Lady Bertram's calm inquiry of, 
Where shall the child come to first, sister, to you or to us? Sir Thomas heard with some surprise that it would be totally out of Mrs. Norris's power to take any share in the personal charge of her. He had been considering her as a particularly welcome addition to the parsonage, as a desirable companion to an aunt who had no children of her own, but he found himself wholly mistaken. Mrs. Norris was sorry to say that the little girl staying with them, at least as things were, was quite out of the question. Poor Mr. Norris's indifferent state of health made it an impossibility. He could no more bear the noise of a child than he could fly. If indeed he should ever get well of his gouty complaints, it would be a different matter. She should then be glad to take her turn and think nothing of the inconvenience. But now, poor Mr. Norris took up every moment of her time, and the very mention of such a thing she was sure would distract him. Then she had better come to us, said Lady Bertram, with the utmost composure. After a short pause, Sir Thomas added with dignity, Yes, let her be in this house. We will endeavour to do our duty by her. Oh, Steve, I've got an idea. I'll read this bit, and when it's someone speaking, would you like to do the voice? <laughs> Steve? Oh, he's gone. There's a shame. I would like him to do the voice. Line two, you're on the wireless. On that event, they removed to Mansfield and the parsonage there, which, under each of its two former owners, Fanny had never been able to approach, but with some painful sensation of restraint or alarm, soon grew as dear to the heart and as thoroughly perfect in her eyes. As everything else within the view and the patronage of Mansfield Park had long been. Yeah, no, we're the not. End. We're not. We're no, not. Let's all fuck off home. Just read the end. <sighs> <sighs> Just read the end of the. Well, that's it then. Look. What we're we gonna do now? No, we're gonna get. We're gonna... I'm on you on the wireless. <sighs> fuck. This is. You know. This is this is never going to work. This 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 play venture is never going to work because you've got idiots listening. You've got idiots listening. Line two. Hi, Ian. It's Paul. Uh, I'm the first listener, and I think your show is cracking. From what I've heard. Thank so you far. very much, Paul. Thank you. Well done, you sir. At last. Thanks. thanks. No, I appreciate it. And uh, can I enter into the spirit of things by reading a little extract from? Uh, one of my favourite books of all time. Well, it is, it is Mansfield Park we're doing, but go on, let's, let's have a little, little bit of yours. It comes from uh, page five of uh, Razzle magazine. <laughs> it is the, viewer, the reader's letters, so I'll find a way if I may. We're waiting. Oh, fuck, this, fuck this shit. That's it, and that's it, and that's the punchline to a joke. In my day, when we did prank phone calls to radio stations, we kind of got them on side a bit, like he did there. Mm -hmm. I used to phone up Mike Dickin, you know, if you're aware of Mike Dickin, who's mm -hmm. no longer with us. Yeah. I used to phone up Mike Dickin and would make some reference to uh, a Morris Minor or some boring car that I knew he was into, so you, he'd get on side. Mm -hmm. And then you'd talk to him for quite a long time, quite a boring way. Well, he got so distracted that you could hear him fumbling around doing something, and then you'd do something very clever and witty and, and catch him <laughs> off guard. And he'd go, so, what did you say? What, what was that? These are just idiots phoning up and swearing. Line three, you're on the wireless. Oh. The beautiful Yellowstone Castle was originally built by the bishops of Chichester in the 12th century and is situated amidst the Sussex Downs. A magnificent building, now a hotel, offering 19 rooms. It carries the title of castle, but is in fact a fortified manor. Weekend vibe. <laughs> Hi, this is Pat Sharp, and if you like songs like this, this, then you'll love the weekend vibe. So, make sure you join me this weekend for the Weekend Vibe. Saturdays from 6pm UK time, only on Play 2 UK. This is a party political broadcast on behalf of the podcast party. Downloading is good. Do it now. Go to playradiouk.com slash podcast. If I were in power, I would make podcasting compulsory, like school and stuff. I listen to them on my MP3 player when I'm in the bath playing with my rubber duck. 
So to support some of our candidates, such as Tommy Boyd, Mike Mendoza, the Gadget Detective, Girls, 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 the Sunday Roast, Bob Staunton, and many more, go to playradiouk.com slash podcast. Yes, we can. Ian Lee, Play Talk UK. Very true, cried Mrs. Norris, which are both very important considerations, and it will be just the same to Miss Lee, whether she has three girls to teach or only two. There can be no difference. I only wish I could be more useful, but you see, I do all in my power. I'm not one of those that spare their own trouble, and Nanny shall fetch her, however it may put me to inconvenience to have my chief counsellor away for three days. I suppose, sister, you will put the child in the little white attic near the old nurseries be much the best place for her, so near Miss Lee, and not far from the girls, and close by the housemaid, who could either of them help dress her, you know, and take care of her clothes, for I suppose you would not think it fair to expect Ellis to wait on her as well as the others. Indeed, I do not see that you could possibly place her anywhere else. Lady Bertram made no opposition. I hope she will prove a well-disposed girl, continued Mrs Norris, and be sensible of her uncommon good fortune in having such friends. Should our disposition be really bad, said Sir Thomas, we must not, for our own children's sake, continue her in the family. But there is no reason to expect so great an evil. We shall probably see much to wish altered in her and must prepare ourselves for gross ignorance, some meanness of opinions and very distressing vulgarity. But these are not incurable faults, nor, I trust, can they be dangerous for her associates. Had my daughters been younger than herself, I should have considered the introduction of such a companion as a matter of very serious moment. But as it is, I hope there can be nothing to fear for them, and everything to hope for her from the association. That is exactly what I think, cried Mrs Norris, and what I was saying to my husband this morning. It will be an education for the child, said I, only being with her cousins. If Miss Lee taught her nothing, she would learn to be good and clever from them. Hello, this is Ian Lee. You're listening to Play Talk uh, UK, and I'm here this evening reading uh, Jane Austen, that's all park. Uh, what would normally be on at this time of the, uh, the night? Who would be the new night? schedule? The new me. schedule. It'd be you, would me. it? Me. Oh, so I've done you out of a job. <laughs> yes. So I'm sorry about that, Jane. I do apologise. <laughs> Look, we're at the end of the chapter, we've got one more page and we finish this chapter. So let me finish this and then we'll take some calls. Uh, I hope she won't tease my poor pug, said Lady Bertram. I have but just got Julia to leave it alone. There will be some difficulty in our way, Mrs Norris, observed Sir Thomas, as to the distinction proper to be made between the girls as they grow up, how to pre- uh, preserve in the minds of my daughters the consciousness of what they are without making them think too lowly of their cousin, and how, without depressing her spirits too far, to make her remember that she is not a Miss Bertram. I should wish to see them very good friends and would on no account authorise in my girls the smallest degree of arrogance towards their relation, but still they cannot be equals. Their rank, fortune, rights and expectations will always be different. It is a point of great delicacy and you must assist us in our endeavours to choose exactly the right line of conduct. Mrs Norris was quite at his service, and though she perfectly agreed with him as to its being a most difficult thing, encouraged him to hope that between them it would be easily managed. It will be readily believed that Mrs Norris did not write to her sister in fame. Mrs Price seemed rather surprised that a girl should be fixed on when she had so many fine boys, but accepted the offer most thankfully, assuring them of her daughters being a very well-disposed, good-humoured girl, and trusting they would never have cause to throw her off. She spoke of her father as somewhat delicate and puny, but was sanguine in the hope of her being materially better for change of air. Poor woman! She probably thought change of air might agree with many of her children. That's the end of chapter one. Jane, uh, what do you think of it so far? I'm loving it. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Okay. What have you picked up from that? Uh, <laughs> from that so far. What, what, what's happening in the story? I don't know. You don't know. <laughs> I'm just absorbing, absorbing your. Okay. Well, what's happening is that um, that uh, Lady Bertram and, and Sir Thomas are taking on board Fanny Price, and they're going to be looking after her. And even though she comes from the common side of the family. It's all about snobbery, this book. It's about snobbery uh, and people bettering themselves and uh, people thinking they're better than others. When are they really? And they're saying that we we will have uh, Fanny, but she uh, will probably bring everyone down because she's a bit common and a little bit pikey. Mm-hmm. That's what it's about. Uh, okay. I have to explain it to you, though, don't you? Thank you. I would have thought my reading was quite clear. I've got, some, got a few calls. Uh, 01243 55 61 61 play.radio.uk. Hello, line one. What do you think about chapter one, then? Oh, no, I'm going to put the fader up. How much do I have to pay you to stop? Sorry? How much do you want to stop? <laughs> well, 30? N- no. F- 50. F- uh, 50 if you stop right now. Who is this? Why is my name important? Because, come on, who is this? Have the guts to come on 
You know, by the way, mate, you're not just yeah. criticising me, right? You're not just criticising me. You're criticising uh -huh. Play Talk. Uh, you're right. criticising Tommy Boyd, the governor. Forget, but forget right. those losers. You're also criticising Jane Austen. Well, get her on the line. I'll talk yeah. to her. You might as well piss in the face of Christ. My name is Randy Lawford. Well, you, do you know what, Randy Lawford? You're banned. You're banned. Don't want you on. Bye-bye. Idiot. Line two. By the way... Line two, turn your media player off, I believe is the catchphrase around these parts of town. <laughs> That's it. This is... That's it. That is the best that the internet has to offer. Have you got any calls on the Skype, anything? We've no. got Yvonne. I don't know whether, um... Yvonne, are you there? Good morning to you. How are you? Yes, hello. <laughs> right, is this... this I didn't do anything and haven't for quite some time. Just cut them off. <laughs> Got some calls here. We're on, we're on chapter two, right? Page 13. We've got 490 pages or something, 430 pages to get through. I was hoping we'd get at least half of this done tonight so we can do the other half tomorrow. Okay. If not, I'm going to have to come back next week and do it again. And fi I'll keep coming back until we finish the book. Got a call on the Skype. Hello, Skype caller. Hello. You mentioned Fanny Price. Yes, the character in the story, yes. Is that Catherine Cat? Come on, come on. Line one, you're on the wireless. What's up? That's doing a what's up to us there. Line two, you're on the wireless. I'm liking the book, but I think there's a better one. Can I read a paragraph from it? OK, let's say, yeah. Yep, it's not the end of the book. Charlotte looked at the mirror. She could see the hills from the veil as she was getting married. Her mm. eyes were sore from tears. She was marrying Hugh, but she loved Rupert. And if then, by magic, she felt Jane warm Austen. arms grab her, yeah. it was Rupert. I can't let you marry Hugh, he said. My love is yours and my heart beats with intensity. You'll never know. Charlotte immediately fell to the floor. Oh, Rupert, it's always been you. I'll run away with you. I'll cancel my marriage. Rupert says, then we have one difficult decision ahead. Yeah. Charlotte rubbed her eyes, looked up the cliff. What is it? Fantastic. He simply said, tits or face. <laughs> <laughs> Don't laugh because that encourages them. I'm not being funny, right? Let, let, okay, let's, let's, let, let's, let's be honest, okay? I have a very, very well-paid job on a proper radio station. Absolute radio, it's proper, it's national. <laughs> Some of it's on, on medium weight, but don't matter. It's national radio station, okay? It has millions of listeners. This station, what, has 20, something like that. It's not even proper radio, it's on the internet, so it don't count. My mum can't hear it, so it don't count, okay? Right? I have driven for two and a half hours to come here tonight. Do you know how much I'm getting paid for this, Jane? Go on. I'm getting paid zero. I'm literally getting paid zero pounds and zero pence. I'm doing this because Tommy Boyd, who you all love and worship because you think he's brilliant, said, Ian, come down. It'd be great to have you come down, do something a little bit different. You can do whatever you want. So I thought I would try and educate you pig ignorant, thick arseholes, and all you can do is phone up and play someone shitting down the phone, effing and jeffing, reading stuff from Razzle magazine. What, what is the point of this? I'm almost tempted not not to carry on. I'm almost tempted to put the book down and not carry on with it. You've had an email from Dave. Yes. I've never heard such a wonderful reading of such a lovely book. Oh, well, there we go. Thank you, David. I am currently sat behind a bush. Sp <laughs> yeah. Go on. <laughs> Spying on a lovely naked man getting dressed and want to share his share this beauty with him. Right. Sadly, I'm too okay. close to cutting the cheese to do something else. OK, well, thank you for that, David. That's, 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 at least that's, that's something vaguely uh, relevant. Line one, you're on the wireless. Gary was the most amazing leader we ever had. You could go up and talk to him about pretty much anything, and he knows loads about random stuff. He is the only person in the whole world who can rent a game from Blockbuster and complete it twice in three days. <laughs> amazing. No one could beat him at any of his own games. You could try. I've tried a lot of times, but you just can't win against the house. And uh, line two, you're on the wireless. Uh, okay, line three, you're on the wireless. Hello, I'd, uh, I think it's a wonderful evening this evening. I wonder if I could read a little from Mansfield Park as well. Yeah, please do. We're on chat. We're at the beginning of chapter two. 
thank you. Located near Ollerton on the hedge of historic Sherwood Forest, this 150-acre park is one of Nottinghamshire's most popular visitor attractions. Yeah. At the heart of the park is a picturesque remains of a 12th-century Cistern monastery and later country house. Around them lie gardens, meadow and woodland. The attractions of Rufford Range range from a contemporary craft care to yeah. gallery exhibitions to peaceful walks around the lake. Hang on, but sorry. Be home, be after eight, because uh, there's plenty of dogging going on in the car park, yeah, no. which includes Busty Brenda and a bold bonanza. Uh, is it... it uh, I'm one. Hello? Hello, it's me, Richard Beck again. I found where the Crawfords come in. Oh, yes, OK, so whereabouts? It's about six pages into Chapter 4. In my edition, it's 73 page. OK. Um, well, that's Chapter 8 of mine. Let's find Chapter... Is it really? Chapter well, 4. Yeah, yeah, OK. Well, listen, we're, we're about to start Chapter 2 now, so I reckon we'll probably, we probably... We could make it there by t uh, by 11. Well, that's very good, because uh, afterwards we will have a whole audiobook of it. OK. I got an audiobook of this, I think, somewhere. And who's reading it? In cassettes, and now, the, nowadays I can't do my cassettes anymore. Oh, I've still got a cassette player. I bought a very nice, um, just going off on tangent for a slide, I, I don't know why I bought it. I do buy things off eBay, and I, I buy them and think, that's, that's a lot of money. I don't know why. I bought for £100 an old-fashioned dance set record player. Do you, do, you, do you know what they are? Record player, what, like a gramophone record player? Well, yes, it is. It's a, it's a dance set one with a lid, and it's the one where you put the singles on the top and a little arm clip, clips it, and you flick a switch, yeah. and the single drops, and then the arm lifts up by itself, and then goes and, and lands on the, uh, on the single, and it sounds like shit. <laughs> it's one of those. hundred pounds it cost me. A hundred... I think my granddad had one. Yeah. OK. Well, well, listen, if you keep listening, I reckon by 11 we should make it to, to Chapter 4, so hopefully we'll get... Uh, We'll get that bit in. Well, it would be great if you can. I will do my best. If, we, if, if idiots, g g you know, can stop phoning me. Um, and uh, But listen, thank you very much. I'm, I'm really sorry that so many people are calling up trying to ruin our evening. Yeah, so am I, but they are cultural Philistines. They, they are, yeah. <laughs> That's, it's easy for you to say. Well, listen, we'll speak to you later on. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye -bye. There we go. Let's go to line... No, let's uh, try line three. Three, you're on the wireless. I know you're reading something from the literary past, but I thought it would be important to bring it into the, to the future, you know, the, the now. OK. I'll read something from, from something I've had. It's going to take something very special to top this last week in terms of 2009. Since Wednesday, McCarthy has consumed a ludicrous amount of alcohol, won a decent amount of money betting, had three brushes with the law, including one photo, been asleep in a public road again on a mattress, gained a ridiculous amount of free items, bled, vomited... And gone on a 16 hour sleep. That is the sign of a good week. Well, thank you very much for that. There we go. At least we're getting people reading. That's what this is all about. Line four. Evening, Ian. Good evening, Alan. Sorry, I'm a bit late tonight, mate. I have some bad news at home. Oh, well, I hope everything's all right. Well, considering I had money pinched. How? Oh, you had money pinched? Yeah. How much? £16.70p. Who put, hang on a minute, where did, where did this get, how did this get pinched? I'm in a cash box, locked up in my bedroom. Yeah. And my so-called housemate, he must have had a key to get into my bedroom door. Yeah. Jump, force open the cash box and take the money out. Oh, Alan. So I've to involve the police and everything. Oh, for, for 16 pounds? Yeah, there's money on my bed we taking to the Grand National. <laughs> <laughs> so let, let me get this right, Alan. This, this, this flatmate of yours... Housemate. This housemate of yours... Yeah? ...has broken into your room... Yeah? ...and stolen your £16.70 Grand National money. Yeah. But, I mean, the same thing has happened to it as was going to happen to it anyway, in that you've just given it away. No, no, but if I gave it away at the bookies, that was with my permission. But my, my big one, yes. you went in my room without my permission. OK, well, um... Well, I'm very sorry to hear that, Alan, and if... Hey, it, wait, yeah. I'm allowed to know what topic should we go off? Well, Alan, would you uh, like to listen? Yes, please, Ian. Chapter 2. The little girl performed her long journey in safety and at Northampton was met by Mrs Norris, who thus regaled in the credit of being foremost to welcome her and in the importance of leading her into the others and recommending her to their kindness. 
Fanny Price was at this time just ten years old, and though there might not be much in her first appearance to captivate, there was at least nothing to disgust her relations. She was small of her age, with no glow of complexion, nor any other striking beauty, exceedingly timid and shy and shrinking from notice. But her hair, though awkward, was not vulgar. Her voice was sweet, and when she spoke, her countenance was pretty. Sir Thomas and Lady Bertram received her very kindly, and Sir Thomas, seeing how much she needed encouragement, tried to be all that was conciliating, but he had to work against the most untoward gravity of deportment, and Lady Bertram, without taking half so much trouble or speaking one word where he spoke ten, by the mere aid of a good-humoured smile, became immediately the less awful character of the two. Your thoughts, Alan? Oh, I've only got one thought on that. Yes. Pardon? Insightful. We're funny. When, when Tommy asked me to do this, it wasn't going to be anything like this. This is absolutely. Can't get your gadgets to work properly or want to know how to choose the best technology for you and how to get it at the best possible price? Either way, you can get the impartial, jargon-free tech advice in plain English on thegadgetdetective.com. There are no charges, subscriptions or fees to pay. You don't even have to register to receive free help. Simply go to gadgetdetective.com, click on free tech advice and type your question. So, get your free tech advice today. Visit gadgetdetective.com. Gadgetdetective.com. Making sense of technology. The home of free speech. Radio you won't hear anywhere else. Play Talk UK. Ian Lee. There we go. We've got a, a, a Skype text there. Anything of uh, any interest, Jane? Calling you Jane because it just, that's the name that seems to you pop up. You call me whatever you like. Okay. Right. Dearest listeners, I think I can presume to speak for us, for us all when I dare to vouchsafe that one feels a compelling urge to... Felicitate. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. The good people at Play Radio of the UK on the lucky... Happenstance. ...of securing the sterling services of one Ian Lee Esquire for tonight's Cyber Radiogram performance. His... Erudition. Thank you. And breeding shine through his verbal gymnastics like the sun, sun through the... Em- Sorry, you could read that one, could you? Okay, sorry. Yeah. Off the... What? Caribbean. Oh, you weren't paying attention. The Caribbean, yeah. <laughs> Ever your intent and humble servant, Miss Austin. There we go. Yes, oh. cheers for the free plug for me book, mate, Fantastic. innit? Fantastic, there we go. Let's, uh, let's, uh, well, let's take a couple more calls and we'll, 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 we'll steam ahead through chapter two. Uh, it, it's looking like we're not going to get as far in the book as I thought, but I, th- I do think we can probably... Here till 11 o'clock, so we've got another hour. We can probably... Um, Chapter 4, it brings up, we're on page 13, that brings up to page 41. I think we can finish chapter 4 by tonight, which will put us in good stead uh, for tomorrow when we uh, really try and finish the uh, the book. Okay. Send these couple of quick calls. Line 2, you're on the wireless. For those of you disappointed uh, by the autobiography but rushed out to get it, this collection of John Peel's writings on popular music, popular culture and uh, home life is going to be instantly appealing. I- I'm happy to tell you uh, that... This is the best commemoration to his life in printed form. And for years, uh, I remember Steve Albini's dedication of The End of Radio to John Peel as one of the great live moments. And Friends oh. Band's dedicating songs, uh, some of them quietly amazed that they'd been among the last to be played. Yeah, OK, lovely. <laughs> Line one, you're on the wireless. Ian, can I just apologise? I know you came on tonight to read this book, and yeah. I think we took a bit of the mickey, and, uh, you know. Yeah, you so, can I bit. just apologise on behalf of all the listeners? I mean, it's not on, and what's basically happened is, it's just, it's, it's not fair to you, really. I is mean, someone, really strangling, is someone strangling a chicken in the background? You try <laughs> your hardest to, you know, engage your mind, yes. and people just mess about. Yeah. Well, they, they, listen, I, Rob, I appreciate that because it is something, I'm trying something a little bit different. I'm kind of exposing myself a little bit here. Uh, and yeah. I am just trying to do a good thing. What is that Ooh. noise in the background, Rob? Yeah. Hello? Hello? Yes? Yes, I'm listening. Yeah, I guess I was like, listen, I appreciate your apology, Rob. And uh, yeah. let's, let's onwards and upwards and let's make this next hour really special, shall we? Y- yeah, yeah, I do appreciate that, yeah. Okay, well, thanks for calling. Thank you, cheers, bye. Bye Bye-bye, here we go, what a nice lad, what a nice lad. Line two. I have a text message for you from... Well done. (laughs) Line, line three. Hello? It 
someone just playing the news bed from Absolute Radio. Is that what it is? Yeah. It's a good tune. It's a rocking tune. A rocking tune. Uh, oh, one, two, four, three, fifty-five, sixty-one. Sixty-one is the phone number. Play.radio.uk is the Skype if you, uh, you wish to join in. I guess, listen, we really ought to, um... Crack on with this, and um, try if we can. Let's see, if we can f- at least finish chapter four. I think would be uh, would be kind of a good thing. So, are you paying attention this time? Well, am I going to have to write an essay or something? Well, you're not going to write an essay, but it'll be good to be able to discuss it with you <laughs> afterwards, and you know, on an equal level. So okay. basically, Fanny Price, go, lots of come from poor family, lots of kids. The mum and dad have said, let's go and give them to the to the rich uncle and aunt, the, the rich brother and sister, uncle and aunt. Uh, and so she's moved. She's just arrived now with uh, Sir Thomas and Lady Bertram, mm-hmm. and um, she has decided, she's only ten years old, she decided that uh, Lady Bertram, although the quieter of the two, is the less, uh, less frightening of the, the, the two, OK? Why are the poor ones always called Fanny? I don't know if they're always... <laughs> I don't know if all poor people are called Fanny. <laughs> do you know, <laughs> do you know any rich Fannies? One or two. <laughs> Line one! Uh, hello, can I, uh, can I read a, a passage of my favourite book to you? Yeah, please do! Okay. Thanks very much. Fantastic stuff there. Line two, you're on the wireless. Mansfield Park. Mansfield Park. Mansfield Park. There we go. Mansfield it's Park, probably been many, Mansfield many years Park, since Park, there's been a Mansfield, Mansfield Park, Park chant. Park, uh, you don't get Mansfield them these Park, days, but back in the day, Park, when this book was uh, was written, 1814, Park, Man, you couldn't Park, walk through the streets Mansfield without Park, hearing Mansfield people Park, cheering and chanting Mansfield for Mansfield Park. 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 Yeah. Mansfield Park. Mansfield Park. Mansfield Park. Mansfield Park. Mansfield Park. I can wait all night. Mansfield Park. Mansfield Park. Mansfield Park. Mansfield Park. Do you know what? I'm understanding this story Park. much better Mansfield this time Park. than yeah. I, when I was. I think part Park. of the reason Mansfield is uh, at the Mansfield age of 14, Park. 15. Mansfield Park. Thank you. Mansfield we Park. were forced Mansfield. to read it. Mm-hmm. And I think when you're forced to read a book, Park. it loses any possible hint of beauty and pleasure and, and anything like that. I think yeah. it really detracts uh, from that. Which is, uh, there, and I had to write essays about it, and I couldn't. My essays were terrible. Then suddenly, my sister went to university studying English literature, studied Mansfield Park. Mm-hmm. I copied her essays, started getting really good grades, got in terrible trouble. Uh, they said, Ian, are you stealing? Are you plagiarising this? Mm-hmm. And I said, no. They said, we know you are. So prove, yeah. prove it. Mm-hmm. Couldn't prove it. So I managed to get a D for my English. <laughs> Thanks to my sister. <laughs> Thanks, Joe. Well, I'm one, you're on the wireless. Typewriter, pip, 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 karta hai. Zindagi ki har kahani likta hai. Lovely. Like, uh, oh, the, the, now, the other light has started flashing. Does that mean, are we actually in trouble now? Could be. Oh, they could Christ. be on their way. Oh, Christ. Well, we can lock this door and barricade ourselves in. Line two, you're on the wireless. Um, mm. <laughs> um, mm. <laughs> um, mm. Yeah. Um, mm. <laughs> um, <laughs> I've got a dirty mouth! Yeah. What do I need to do? Do I need to start... You know, making st- making right wing political assertions, or start talking about how I tied up an MP and got him to lick my floor clean with his bum hole or something. Is that what I've got to do? Possibly to get sensible calls. Mm. The, the thing is, you've got these people coming on. You know, you've got political extremists and you've got prostitutes coming on. Mm-hmm. They get. Uh, you know, calls talking about sensuality and, and love and politics and, and uh, repatriation, stuff like that. I am reading from a great classic English literature. I'm getting people phoning up, and to be honest, I, you know, they're just taking the mick. Not on, is it? And you're, you're smirking as though it's funny. <laughs> this isn't funny. No. It's a bit. Well, no, it's not. It's not a bit. 
I thought I was getting Matt Hollick producing me tonight. I'd turn up, some dolly bird, and then you giggling away. <laughs> You've got a tattoo on your wrist, that gives a lot away. <laughs> <laughs> Line three, you're on the wireless. Ian? Yes. This is utter rubbish. Hello, utter rubbish, what can I do for you? you Ian, if you keep reading this book, I tell you, uh, the reason this radio station has only got 20 callers yep. is because everyone's committing suicide due yep. to the boredom of it. <sighs> The young people were all at home and sustained their share in the Please, introduction God. very well with good humour. And no embarrassment, at least on the part of the sons, who at 17 and 16 and tall of their age, had all the grandeur of men in the eyes of their little cousin. <laughs> the two girls were more at a loss from being younger and in greater awe of their father, who addressed them on the occasion with rather an injudicious par uh, particularity. But they were too much used to company and praise to have anything like natural shyness, and their confidence increasing from their cousin's total want of it, they were soon able to take a full survey of her face and frock in every indifference. They were a remarkably fine family, the sons very well-looking, the daughters decidedly handsome, and all of them well-grown and forward of their age, which produced as striking a difference between the cousins in person as education had given to their address, and no one would have supposed the girls so nearly of an age as they really were. There was, in fact, but two years between the youngest and Fanny. Julia Bertram was only twelve and Maria but a year older. The little visitor, meanwhile, was, un was, was as unhappy as possible. Afraid of everybody, ashamed of herself and longing for the home she had left, she knew not how to look up and could scarcely speak to be heard or without crying. Mrs. Can you turn your, your, your media player off, please? Hello? Idiot and cats, um... <laughs> Mrs. Norris had been talking to her the whole way from Northampton of her wonderful good fortune and the extraordinary degree of gratitude and good behaviour which it ought to produce. And her consciousness of misery was therefore increased by the idea of its being a wicked thing for her not to be happy. The fatigue, too, of so long a journey became soon no trifling evil. In vain were the well-meant condense... Conden I can't speak now, listen to me. Condescensions of Sir Thomas and all the officious procrastinations of Mrs. Norris that she would be a good girl. In vain did Lady Bertram smile and make her sit on the sofa with herself and pug and vain was even the sight of a gooseberry tart uh, giving her comfort. She could scarcely swallow two mouthfuls before tears interrupted her and sleep seeming to be her likeliest friend, she was taken to finish her sorrows in bed. I'm thinking of growing some gooseberries. Are you? Yeah, I am. I've started growing vegetables in the garden. Although, I've started growing vegetables. Uh, I'm growing shallots and onions at the moment. I'm waiting for my potatoes to grow the things. Mm -hmm. um, so, but it turns out, you plant an onion, right? Yeah. What do you think, what do you, think you get? Uh, leaves, Spr like sprouts. Yeah, but under, uh, under, uh, in the dirty bit, in the, the the brown bit. What do you get under the brown? So you plant an onion. Okay. What do you mean? Right, okay. So you, so you plant a potato. Yeah. What do you get? Yeah, but that's what I don't get. Why do you have to, with potatoes, to plant potatoes, yes. you have to just pl plant smaller potatoes? Yeah. But what do you get when you plant a potato? Bigger potatoes. But you get potatoes. <laughs> yeah. So you put one potato in. Yes. One potato out. No, one potato in, <laughs> and then you get, like, maybe a dozen potatoes. Yes. You're saying yes as though you... Did, well, I you... don't know. Is that the case? That is the case. Oh, OK. Shallots. Mm-hmm. You put a shallot in. Yes. Get lots of shallots out. Mm-hmm, you get shallots. You get shallots and sh of shallots. An onion, mm -hmm. you put an onion in... Yeah. ...you get a bigger onion out. Okay. Where's Where's the justice in that? Well, there's no point, is there? Well, there is no point. You might as well go and buy an onion. <laughs> in a shop. So with potatoes, yes. they are just like little tiny, they're like, they look like new potatoes, don't they? Just little tiny well, which, potatoes. which potatoes? <laughs> it's like I'm talking to what? my four-year-old nephew, what? <laughs> the bits that you plant. No, you plant a potato. Yes, but when you plant a potato, yes. are you saying that that then just grows into lots of potatoes? Yes. Well, Does it? it? Yes. Oh, right, I didn't know that. That makes sense. Then. You know, you know, like, beef comes from cows? Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And eggs come from? Um, ducks. They do, they do. <laughs> Someone had a go at me for being a vegetarian and eating, um, chicken, uh, eating, um, eggs. And they said, well, you can't eat eggs because that's baby chickens. But it's not, is it? It's like eating a hen's period. I think that's what it is. It is just period, a period, isn't yeah. it? We've all eaten them, haven't we? <laughs> Speak for yourself. Line two, you're on the wireless. Oh, hello, Ian. How are you, mate? Very well, all thank right. you. Oh, have you noticed that Tesco's now are doing a uh, fake prawn cocktail skips again? No, I hadn't noticed that. They're doing them in big bags, like yeah. for uh, 79p for oh, like a, yeah. a bag. Okay. And that's much better value than buying skips individually, if you like that sort of thing. Yeah, and this ties into the Jane Austen novel, How? 
Well, I wanted to ask you as well, while you're on the line, what's wrong? I saw you on TV tonight doing that thing with 118118, uh, text you back service. Oh, yes, I was on Watchdog this evening. Oh, yeah. Get this, I, film, I, film on I Saturday morning. Them, yeah, I'm, talk, I'm, talking to, I'm talking to the lady. Jane. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's filmed on Saturday morning. Hello, Turned Jane. up, it's Nikki Campbell, mm -hmm. me, Connie Nikki, Huck. Guinea, Guinea. Connie Huck mm -hmm. and Cheggers. I like her. Mm -hmm. Can you believe that? What, if a bomb yeah, had gone off... Sh shut up. What's that all about? If then? a bomb had gone off, mm -hmm. it would have been horrible, wouldn't it? <laughs> People could have been well, killed. Terrible thing to imagine. I wanted to ask question <laughs> about that appearance on the TV. Yes. All right, you know, like, you're always bemoaning your lack of television gigs and everything. Yes. Look look at Dermot... What's his name? The X Factor boy. Murnahan. Yeah? Uh, no, the one that does X Factor. He's doing well, right? Dermot Leary, yes. He's, like, getting the big money now. He's getting the big bucks, yes. Look at his hair. Yeah. Right, what's up with your air? It's not very TV friendly. Well, no, uh, did, it, did it look a mess on the watchdog? No, it just looked like there was a lot of it, and like you had a side part in, well, like, this, from like school time. This this haircut, this, I had my haircut like a week ago. Where? This Where? is short, this in is short for me now. No, no. How long do you think a man's nipple should be? <laughs> well, it, it depends, doesn't it, really? I'm well, getting a bit worried. How long well, are yours continually growing? Yeah, I, like, it's not only the hair issue that yeah. I've had to contend with over yes. the last few years. Yeah. Now my nipples are growing longer. Right. Now, I yeah. don't know if I'm no. turning into, like, some kind of female gorilla. Okay. Well, thanks they for calling. On. Yeah. Line three, you're on the wireless. What, what, what's your taking on the Mansfield Park? Can I ask a quick question about one of the characters? Yes. How big is this funny? Well, she's, at the moment, she's ten years old. Right. But she grows up into a, into a fully grown woman. Full head of hair. Uh, yeah, well, there's a picture. Uh, 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 no, that's Girly? probably Jameson. Uh, sorry. Curly. I think she's got quite long hair. Yes. I recognise. I've seen that Fanny before. Have you? Well, you've seen a picture of, of uh, Fanny, have you? Yeah. Or have you seen Fanny in, in the flesh? <laughs> Fanny. I mean, this book was written in 1814, so you know you've probably not seen this Fanny. <laughs> you don't get how much, do you? Yeah. Well, thanks for calling. <laughs> They've got a, a caller on the Skype. A bit quiet on the Skype, isn't it? It's, uh, hello. Yes, you're on. Hey, Hello. <laughs> oh, bloody hell, it's Jean! <laughs> OK, I'm an idiot. Where the bloody hell have you been? I said, Jean, I'm an idiot. What? OK, I'm an idiot. Is this actually Jean, or is this a uh, sound box? <laughs> what? Oh, I need a package kit today. Say that again. I just have to get it on here. Say right. Tell me what the date is today. I just have to there we go. The sound boy. There we go. Well done. You see, I knew it wasn't. Uh... Let's rattle through these calls, and we're going to crack on with uh, with chapter two. We've got uh, uh, about another eight or eight or ten pages of chapter two, and we will finish that by eleven o'clock this evening. So that's uh, that's good. Line one, you're on the wireless. Hello. Hello there. Hello. I'm really enjoying your reading, mate. Really good. Excellent. So, what's your name, my friend? Jamie from Croydon. Jamie, listen. Thank you very, very much. Um, yeah, I'm. I'm I've started writing my first book myself. Can uh, I read you a little piece? Yeah, please do. This is exciting. Um, I'll start, um, I won't start from the beginning, I'll start about halfway through my, my first two thousand. Okay, well, give, it, give us an idea of your, your style, at least. It's like a, like an urban drama. Oh, kind yeah. Of thing. yeah. It's called The Streets of South London. Fantastic. Ready? Yeah. He headed back to his flat to call the police, but as he turned, Nicole's door flew open and a big leather-clad hand grabbed, grabbed tight across his mouth. Another hand grabbed his arm and pulled it up roughly behind his back. Then he felt the knee smash finally into the small of his back and yeah. it flopped down as he was dragged into the flat. There was another man in there. This bloke was about six foot and dressed from head to tie in black. All that was visible were the man's eyes and his wrists, where his jumper didn't quite meet the glove. He could just make out a barbed wire tattoo around the wrist, mm. which had faded with time. While he was being held, the man came around rushing at him and a steel toe cap boot smashed into the side of his face. Jamie felt the teeth inside of his mouth shatter, but felt no pain as he spat a mouthful of blood and bits of tooth on the floor. Wow. Then came the second blow. This time it was a fist that landed squarely on his nose. Blood poured as a delicate bone crunched under the pressure of the powerful punch. All of a sudden, gut-twisting pain enveloped the whole of his body mm. and he fell face first to the floor, now soaked in blood. Kicks rained down on his ribs and legs and it was just when Jamie thought he couldn't get any worse. A big leather boot came crashing down on his arm. There was a sickening cracking noise and he blacked out. Wow. That's just a few words. And what's the book called, my friend? 
It's called The Streets of South London. It's fantastic, very powerful. What do you think of that, Jane? Mm. Yeah. Very violent, but described yeah. excellently. The detail of the tattoo that had faded over time. Can I make one suggestion? You certainly can. You use the word leather too much. Right, okay. Yeah, I would, I would, I would not use that word quite so often. Take it out, take out two of them, and you've got yourself a hit there. <laughs> okay, well, it's my first attempt. I've got to do a bit of a ring right. No, it's, hey, listen, mate, it's very good stuff. Thank you very much for that. Brilliant. We've we got an email, have we? We're, we're taking the emails on uh, talk at playradiouk.com. What have we got there, Jane? We've had an email from Steve. Yeah. Uh, thank you for regaling us with such a beautiful voiced man reading a wonderful book. Thank you, Stephen. It brings back such a wonderful memory of my ex girlfriend, Chantelle. She was an English teacher and it was her favourite book. We split up, sadly. She didn't approve of my improper use of the colon. Can you hear a loud humming noise? Yes. What's that? <laughs> it's the air conditioning, isn't it? Well, I can only hear it in my e- in my headphones. That that sounds like a sonic buzz coming from somewhere. Not me. Well, it's not me. I've not brought my sonic buzz machine with me. I might be able to have actually. We've got a call there on the Skype. Hello, yes. Oh, you, you need to click. No, on. because oh, two it's of that them coming. Oh, no, okay. There's two coming through. And so so does, the system can't handle that. Yeah, let me do that. Wow. And oh, we don't want them because that's the. Uh, and that. Oh, oh. Get rid of that. That's, uh... Okay. Hello, you're on the air. I think I'm bringing them back. Oh, okay. Well, it's exciting. Let's do that again. It's so exciting. It's not. It's, it's, it's dull, but um. Ah, here we go. Hello, you're on the air. Hello. No. Nope, okay. Well, let's take a phone call. Line one. Can you hear a, a, a low, kind of dull, sort of droning noise? Well, let's try now. Hello. <laughs> Hello? Yeah, yeah. Can, you, can you hear a sort of low, dull, droning noise? Yes, that's your voice, fella. Cheeky side. Let's go to line, line five. Five, you're on. Hello? Hello? Hello, I'm in, the, I'm in the book. You're in the book? I'm in Mansfield Park, yes, what, what, William. What, what, where are you? Huh? You're, well, you're, you're William? Yep, I'm William out of the book. OK, well, how did you get in the book? Uh, I, I travelled back in time. Oh, right. OK, yes, yes, because yeah. that, that, that happened. Is, it, is anyone going to take this seriously tonight, William? No. No, they're not going to, are they? OK. Well, if we just had a text saying that the, the drone is the, is the vending machine outside? Yeah, apparently. Outside wow. the studio. That's fantastic. That, that's a well-designed um, mm. thing, isn't it? Definitely. We oh. should have a call on Skype now. OK, let's go. Hello, Skype caller. Hello. This, uh, might I read a poem for you? Uh, yes, you may. Is it one you've written yourself? Oh, yes, uh, yes, it's my own work. It's, uh, I find, if, if I might introduce it first, I find poetry to be an excellent form of uh, c- catharsis. Okay. Uh, it's, I've been going through a hard time recently, and I've, uh, I've tried to unload my, my innermost torments into this verse. It's a good way of so... doing it. Poetry is very difficult, though, because it's, it's very hard. Only a few people can d- do it well without it sounding like sixth form claptrap. Oh, yeah, there's some bloody awful poetry out there. Absolutely terrible stuff, some of it. Yeah. OK, well, what's, the, what's your poem called, and let's hear it. Well, it's... Uh, OK, if uh, the, the structure of my poem, it's based around a traditionally inspired quintain, which uh, combines anapastic trimeter with a cup of the bimeter, by the way. Uh-huh. No, oh, anyway. There once was a young man from Doncaster who had never been much of a long laster. When in bed with this old dear, he'd swim cheetah somewhat near, so he'd aim at her face and then blast her. You twat. Boss of the Something Corporation. For more details, go to something.info. If you're involved in motor racing, then you need Showtrax International. We're the world's number one supplier of automotive display and pit lane equipment to the motor racing industry. We not only specialize in all aspects of pit box equipment from race flooring to walling, lighting and gantries, but we also provide on-track services for both graphics and carbon fiber repair. Call us today on 01234 782 800 or just go to showtracks.net and see how we can help you. Any, many, miny, mo. Catch a podcast by its toe. If it squeals, let it go. Then pop to play radio. UK.com forward slash podcast and download another show. Play radio UK.com forward slash podcast. It's like going to a library without actually having to go. Ian Lee. Play Talk UK. 
Now we're really we're kind of falling behind uh, with this story. It's, it's you know it's looking like we're not going to make the end of chapter four, which is is uh, what I was hoping. Um, listen, I, I, I have come in here with the very best of intentions. I, I am genuinely, hand on heart, not getting any money for this. I know people won't believe this. Uh, I am not getting paid any money for this. I'm doing this um, for the reasons that, that, that Tommy Boyd has asked me. I'm a big fan of Tommy Boyd's. And, uh, oh, you're on that one. Sorry, yes. Uh, the, the big fan of Tommy Boyd's. He, he phoned me up and asked if I would come and uh, do uh, something on, on talk radio to try and give it a bit more kind of profile. I said I would love to. Mm-hmm. Um, it was an honour to work for free. Uh, and I said the only... Uh, thing that I need is that I'm allowed to do whatever I want. I, okay. I do, do no restrictions. And Tommy said, well, you know, this is this is radio. You won't hear anywhere else. Mm-hmm. Uh, be real, be honest, do what you want to do. So I decided that I would like to read Jane Austen's Mansfield Park um, to the listener um, because it's, it's a brave thing for me to do. Uh, it's something a little bit different. Um, so I thought I'd give it a go. Uh, and also, just to educate, I've, I've been listening to a lot of the play talk output, and um, some of it's some of it's getting there. Some of it's getting there, mm-hmm. but I just think you're, you're you're kind of attracting. How can I say this? Kind of attracting um, idiots. <laughs> really? <laughs> do you think? Mm. Yeah, I do. I do think. My wallet's falling out there. All my cards falling out. Uh, yeah, I do think that, and I, I think that by doing, if you do something like this and you publicise that you're having uh, um, someone who used to have a very high profile on television a few years ago, uh, but that you know, fingers crossed, that will change. But uh, reading classic literature, mm-hmm. I just think that you're suddenly going to start getting a whole new generation of listeners. Uh, you know, you're going to get the silver surfers. You're going to get um, uh, pensioners, um, uh, people with spending power. Uh, listening in, and I just think that that is probably um, a good thing. So th- that's that's why I've done this. Now, if you want me to stop doing this, then uh, oh one two four three fifty five sixty one sixty one, uh, and we we'll, we will have a little bit of a vote, and we will see what you want. I will be very very upset if I have to stop doing this, and probably won't come back tomorrow. Um, uh, you know, Tommy will have to get. Some get Febs in or something like that to mm-hmm. do it. Um, so, uh, you know, be brave, is what I'm going to say to you, listener. Just be brave. I've got a caller on the Skype. You're going to be brave, Skype caller? Fuck the police. Yeah, no. Fuck them. Uh, Fuck the police. My vote is to fuck the police. Fuck the police. But Mansfield Park's not a bad book, though, is it? So can I just get this right? Your your vote is to, to, to fuck the police, but to carry on reading Mansfield Park? <laughs> fuck the police. Carry on reading Mansfield Park. That's great. But more importantly... <laughs> Thank you very much for your call. Thank you. I turned your microphone down there by mistake. I meant to turn the phone, phone fader down. The we've got a, uh, we've got Fat Steve. Hello, Fat Steve. Hello. Surely it's you only a matter it. of time before Boyd gives you your own show on here, isn't it? <laughs> There's no money in it. He start he started off the conversation oh, with Ian. I've got a, I've got an, uh, an offer for you. There's no money in it. Oh yeah, thanks, Tommy. That's what I need in, in time of recession, <laughs> isn't it? Two and a half hour drive for no money. <laughs> Petrol? No, no petrol money. I'm afraid. You've got to make your own way down. Yeah, but... Gift voucher to Catherine Cat? Yeah, no, nothing like. Do they do gift vouchers, Prozies? <laughs> Don't know. Yeah, I wonder, I wonder if you can go in because you know when like you get if you get like um, if you get a fifty pound voucher for like game or H and V or something, you go in uh, and you, um, you you like spend twenty quid of it. And you say, they, you get the 30 quid back and you can go back in and spend... Is that the same with Prozzy vouchers? If you go in and you get a hand shandy, which I, I think is, is... The going rate is £25, I think. <laughs> but you've still got £25 left over. Can you save that and so the next time you come back you can put it towards a blowy? Or how does that work, Steve? I don't, I, I'll have to ask Catherine the next time I speak with her. I don't think it's performance related. No, OK, we'll I, do. Yes. I think the fee is probably negotiated in advance. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, do do ask her for me, please. And I then definitely when, will. Then when you know, if you send me an email, 
Um, <laughs> with the rate card? Yeah, and um, then I'll, I'll take it from there. All right, excellent. Thank you, Steve. And I want to put in a vote for Mansfield Park. Okay, so that's, that's too... Well, do you want to fuck the police as well? Depends on what the police look like, really. Hey, there, I was, I was, when I was at LBC and doing nights, and they used to give me cabs before it got taken over and became rubbish, um, there, I was once waiting outside for a cab at one o'clock in the morning, and this police car drove past, and I thought, oh, Christ, I'm going to, you know... Well, I don't know what was going to happen. <laughs> but it was two really hot police women in it, like, quite hot. Yeah. And they sort of drove past, and this is when I was still doing a bit of telly, so I think they recognised me. So they drove past, and they drove back again very slowly, and they were sort of giggling. They were like girls, like real girls. Mm -hmm. And they were giggling, and they wound down the window and went, all right, Ian, do you fancy a lift? <laughs> <laughs> really? And I went, I'm all right, thanks, I've got a cab coming. Oh, what an oh. idiot! <laughs> and I should have said, of course I'd love a, a, a lift, ladies. Let's, let's well, go. How many pornos have I seen that started that way? Oh, man. And yeah. I've, got, I've got a soft spot for the, for the police lady, let, let it be said. And I, I said no to them, Steve. And yes, in my head, that scenario played out in a very, very exciting way. Once when I was drunk, I was relieving myself on the side of the road and two women police officers pulled up next to me. When you say relieving yourself... No, not, not making shepherd's pie. No, you just, weren't making um, shepherd's pie. You were having a, you were having a wee-wee. Yes. Okay. And I, but I pinched it and cut it off as soon yeah. as I saw the wow. police vehicle pulled up. Yeah. But it was a very embarrassing experience. They let me go. But yeah. yeah, man. I wonder if... if well. Steve, thank you for that. Sure, bye-bye. OK, so that's, that's two votes for carrying on the reading. Let's, um, uh, let's go to line, uh, line, th line three, you're on the wireless. Oh, no, hang on. Hear this porn clip. This is a guy coming very loudly from a porno that uh, Richard found. Uh, this yeah. is the clip. Let me refresh your memory. Oh, we don't want to hear that, do we? Line, line six, you're on the wireless. Oh, Christ, it's the witch. This is from Left 4 Dead, one of the best games ever. I've not played this for a long time. Maybe I ought to. Yeah, don't wake the witch! Don't wake the witch! Don't wake the witch! No, you woke her! Okay, so... <laughs> line two. Uh, Elmo and Michael are on tomorrow, aren't they? Tomorrow, aren't they? they are. Do they do it in here or are they on the Skype? Uh, Elmo's usually in the studio and sometimes Michael is. Okay, because Michael's the good-looking one, isn't he? Is he? I think so. Okay. Elmo's the ugly one, isn't he? Is he? I think. I don't know. But, um, yes, let's, uh, I'm big fans of their work. Line four. Hello, Ian. Hello, line four. Um, I heard you reading Mansfield Park. I was very inspired. So I'd, I'd like you to continue reading. Can I read you a, a bit of my book that I've been working on? Well, th this is, now this is it. Okay. Uh, th maybe I need to have more faith in my ideas because I knew this was a good idea because now we're starting to get people genuinely phoning up uh, saying, yes, we are, we're enjoying it and also being brave enough to say that, that, that they've written stuff and share it with the listener as well. Indeed. This is a world exclusive as well. well Nobody has seen this so far. Fantastic. Well, let's hear it. Right, okay. I will begin. It was a dark, cold Monday over Shrewsbury. Roland Dempsey was leaving his favourite pub, the Rampaging Stag, after enjoying five pints of Shropshire Lad and a packet of pork scratchings, yet he was not contented. This was bizarre, for Roland was usually a man who demanded little from life. Alcohol, a fish and chip supper, and a blowjob from his wife or sister oh, was usually for, enough to keep him... for God's sake. I'm so... I'm so, I do apologise to anyone offended by... That line too, you're on the wireless. Good evening, Mr. Lee. Good evening, madam. What can I do for you? Madam? <laughs> sorry, I, I can't quite hear you. Oh, oh I'm sorry. I'm, I'm to keep my voice down. My, my, my wife is asleep. So I'm, I'm sorry. So this is a gentleman, is it? It is, yes. How yes, strange. <laughs> How strange. Jane, would you have ever guessed this was a gentleman? Mm, yeah, I think so. Oh, OK. So maybe, Thank maybe. you, Jane. Thank you. Very I, feminine I, one, though. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Well, you know, I'm in touch with my feminine side. In fact, you're you're, you're feminine? My... <laughs> Playback, <laughs> when you get the podcast, you said feminine. I, I, OK, Mr Lee, I, I'm, I'm very nervous. Of course you are, you're not sure whether you're a man or a woman. I'd be nervous. Well, I was nervous until I discovered. I'm, I, I'm how long was the How long was the period in your life when you wondered if you might be gay? There's a lot of talk about periods this evening. Yeah, I, my period was 25 years. Really? Yeah, I'm halfway through it now. No, I didn't, but... The, but yes, OK, so come on, then. Well, 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 I mean, it's slightly gone downhill. I was calling to applaud you... Thank you. ...for your attempts to yeah. introduce some kind of culture... It's brave, isn't it? ...into this yeah. awful 
modern age that we live in where yeah. non-entities yeah. Uh, are famous for the sake of being famous. And, yes. You know, where's the beauty of literature and the wonder of culture? Yes. Well, you know, it's not celebrated enough. And I, I just applaud you for reading you. passages from a beautiful book. And I must I say, beautifully read. Thank you very much. Stumbling a little bit because I'm a little bit nervous, but thank you very much. Beautifully read. Thank you. I, I, and I, I just want to thank you. But, uh, oh, is that... Oh, that's the time. So, shit, sorry, I've got to go and have a wank. Thank you, oh, bye. Jesus Christ. Wait. I should have brought a CD with me, because we could just play, um... A CD now of music and just go, because <laughs> there, well, I, there really is... There is literally no point in me doing any of this. Here's a question for you. Yes, Jane. When is it... Is it always contented, or is it correct at any point to say content? <laughs> For example, yes. If I were to say, yes, I was very, I was very content. Yes. Is it I was very content, or I was very, or I am very content, or I am very contented? What's made you content? <laughs> I don't know anything. No, nothing. Not anything particular. So you're not content then? <laughs> yes, I am content. But what's made you content? I don't know. I don't think there's a word contented. But the previous caller used, not the previous, the previous, previous caller, used the word contented. To be honest, I wasn't listening to him. <laughs> and I have heard that used before. And in the contented. past, I've questioned it. Is it contented? No, there's no such word as contented. Contented is not a word. No. I think they're thinking of um, contested or contested. Because I thought it was content. Yes. But I have, you, I have heard people say contented. I would... OK, my advice to you on this situation is, is <laughs> you should never use the word contented. OK. Uh, and that way you're playing it safe. <laughs> I'll try it in posh company one day and see mm -hmm. if they give me a funny look. <laughs> if they do, I will, I will let you know, and that means Nick, Nick say on the old contented day. OK. OK. Well, Thank well, you. Well, it's an absolute pleasure. Uh, oh, you've... Uh, yes? Hello? Uh, Skype caller. Hello, it's Wayne here. Hello, Wayne. Hi, uh, can I ask, are you aware there's a Facebook campaign that's been going recently? Uh, are, you, are you a fan of the, uh, the old Christian of rock? Am I a fan of the what? The, the, old, the old Christian of rock, the, uh, the Peter Piper of pop, they call him sometimes. You know what I'm talking about. No. Sir Clifford. Okay. Sir, Sir Clifford Richard. Yes, OK. You're not a fan. Uh, I like some of his songs. At the moment, uh, put him. Yes. Sorry. Yeah, I, I like. Oh, I like some of his songs. Yes. Yes. Because uh, at the moment, there's, there's a campaign to put one of his Christmas songs to number one Easter. Right. And uh, well, if enough people buy it, then he'll go to number one. That's how it works. That's how the charts work. Number one hit. Yeah, that's how the charts work, definitely. Yeah, that's... Oh, that's yeah, you, you buy... You sell lots of records, you go high in the chart. Yeah, that's that's pretty much how it's worked for the last, you know, 60 years or so. Because I think well, also Sir Cliff, he's, he's had a number one hit in the last six decades now, I think. He's had, so he's he's had at least... another one. At least a number one. Number seven. Yep. OK. And, sorry, well, the, the interesting part of this call is... <laughs> oh, well, wouldn't you like to see if goes to number one at Easter? It, it wouldn't bother me. It, the charts don't mean anything these days. No. No. Not even for Cliff. Well, it probably means something to Cliff. Oh. So, I'm just wondering, why are you phoning up and telling me this? Well, I'm, uh, I'm a bit of a fan of Sir Cliff. It's a bit of a bell end as well. Yes? I thought, uh, well, I'd like to try and spread the word, see what I can do for him. See what you can... OK, what song is it? It's uh, Christmas time. Christmas. There's no song called Christmas time. Oh, no, that's just, you know, Christmas time, mistletoe yeah. and wine. Okay, do you know what that song is called? <laughs> is that not Christmas time? No, you claim to be a fan of Cliff Richard, <laughs> and you don't know what that song is called, <laughs> and you have just sung the title of that song as well. <laughs> Oh, is it? Oh, sorry, is that called mistletoe and wine? That's, that's correct. Contented isn't the word, but content it <laughs> <What>? is. <laughs> <laughs> I've just decided. Oh, no, that's one. That, that's, that's one we have to buy at Easter, anyway. That's, that's the campaign. Well, well, Wayne, thank you so much for that. 
Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. <laughs> Line three, you're on the wireless. No, you've gone. Okay, line two, you're on the wireless. And again. Good evening, Alan. I, I did roll on my quiz night. What? what oh, what? You were you were at a quiz night tonight, were you? Yeah, I was. Yeah. Okay. I came in ninth place. Oh, how many contestants were there? Fourteen. Oh, Jesus. Well, what what I, ones did you get? Give, give us some of the questions. On my own. You, oh, really? Yeah, I was. That's sad, Alan. Why didn't you bring your flatmate along? No, cos I'm not talking to him. Oh, cos he stole the money? Yeah. Give me some of the questions. Name the five winners of The X Factor. Oh, Christ. Um, uh, uh, Leona Lewis. That's one. Um, oh, who's the, uh, Shane Ward? That's two. Leon. Leon. That's three. Leon Jackson. The black lady from this year? What, Alexander Burke? That's the one. That's no, he it. invented the telephone, didn't he? <laughs> um, and... No, J- Alexander Graham Bell. And Jimmy Riddle? No, Steve Brookstein. Oh, Brookstein! Whatever happened to Brookstein? Was he... Maybe he was T. No, that was what I'm thinking of. Yeah. Anyway, how are you, Fifi? I'm very well, thank you. Hey... Uh, I think Ian will be back again tomorrow, I reckon. Well, he, he might do. Well, I'm booked in, Alan, so, yes, I, we'll try great expectations tomorrow. Well, question is, will your mate be there tomorrow, night, Mr Hollick? Matt Bollocks? Yeah. Who who knows? I mean, yeah. have we heard any of the usual suspects calling tonight? Probably. Uh, Alan, in yeah. terms of your greatest calls, this isn't yeah. one of them. This is one of my greatest calls. No, the the exact opposite of what you just heard me say. Oh, it's not a great call. Yeah. Anyway, I've got. Can I just leave on one note? Go on. Why are you? Line two, you're on the wireless. Oh. Hello, Ian. I heard you mention that you were nervous about being gay earlier. No. Are you still, are you still no. nervous? No. Because there's I mean, nothing to it, you know. Right. Not Just, like, bend over. Yeah, OK. I'm not nervous about being I'd gay. Like big hard cock up your ass. If that's what you like. I'm nothing against it, me. It's not for me. It gets a bit dark around here. OK, well, I, 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 right. listen, Jesus Christ. We've started from one of the greatest pieces of British literature to bending over and have a big hard cock up your ass. This is not my finest hour. We've got a break here as well now. Mm-hmm. So I'll do, I'll do this and then we'll see what happens then. Parts of the Something Corporation. If you're looking for a sailing adventure that will take you on the ultimate voyage of discovery, then the Jubilee Sailing Trust is for you. On one of our voyages, you can learn the historic art of sailing a tall ship and be involved in almost every activity on board, including taking the helm, setting sails and keeping watch, regardless of your physical ability. So if you want to share in the adventure and challenge of sailing a tall ship on the open seas, just go to www.jst.org.uk. The Jubilee Sailing Trust. Life-changing experiences for all abilities. Fact. 99% of broadcast radio worldwide is subject to state control. Government quangos paid out of your taxes, controlled by politicians and their mandarins, dictating what you're allowed to hear. They hold the licenses. They set the rules. They're worried about you. You frighten them. We welcome you. We are Play Talk UK. Play Talk UK. Ian Lee. Here we go. OK, well, it's, it's um, here till uh, 11 o'clock. What happens at 11 o'clock? It sw- switches off, then, does it? You just go... We go to play two... Play two, and that's the pop, the pop station. They mm-hmm. play pop music. And, yes. um, well, I look forward to hearing that. Well, I won't be. I'll be listening to... What, what I was listening to on the way here was Boyd on the, the podcast. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and uh, probably listening to Boyd on the way back. Mm. Or Talk Sport, one of those two. <laughs> Do you know what I was listening to on the way here? Uh, the sounds of a, someone pleasuring themselves. <laughs> no. You should be able to get a podcast like that. There must be one somewhere of someone just like, oh, yeah, oh, oh. So that when you are at home having a bit of shepherd's pie or something, mm-hmm. you can just play that. There must be, well, this is what we do. I've just, this is the money-making thing. And you okay. can't have this play radio. This is mine, right? I'm <laughs> copywriting it now. It's you just record, like, um, ten-minute tapes. We'll do, like, men and women. Mm-hmm. So it'd be me, like, going... I turn that tape of, 
Oh, Michelle. Oh, yeah. But you do it for different women's names. Yeah. And then you'd do it for men's names. It'd be you going, oh, Steve. Oh, yeah, that's so big, Steve. Mm -hmm. And then you'd sell it um, for a pound or more, and it would be like your own personalised wank tape. Right. That you could listen to mm -hmm. if you were a bit sad <laughs> and horny. Isn't that what the um, 0900 lines are for? Oh, yeah, damn, that idea has already been <laughs> thought of years ago. Oh, that's a shame. Were you going to say something? Probably not. No, OK. <laughs> Let's go to line, uh, line one, you're on the wireless. Can't do... <laughs> Yep. Line two, you're on the wireless. Will you be reading a book tomorrow night? Uh, well, I was going to do, to try and finish this, but I, I'm, I'm, it's kind of looking like we're going to have to abandon the whole Mansfield Park thing. Can I make a recommendation of Great Expectations? Because the character of Mrs Havisham... Yes. ...I find to be very, very personal. I mean, it's a lady who's been isolated away and obviously hasn't reached the goals in life. Yeah. I think in the days of the credit crunch and things like well, that, we can all identify with someone who's, you know, lost their way. Well, Rob, I've got, I've actually got, I'm, I've got great expectations now. Yeah? Yeah. Well, actually, I look forward to hearing that tomorrow night. Well, shall I read you a bit now? Oh, I would love you to. Chapter one. My father's family name being Pirip and my Christian name, Philip, my infant tongue could make of both names nothing longer or more explicit than Pip. Mm. So, I, so I called myself Pip and came to be called Pip. Yes, I'm loving, I'm loving this. I gave Pip as... <laughs> <laughs> There's a bit of the interference on the line. I'm going to have to let you go, Rob. Yes, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God almighty. Will I get told off for this? Am I going to get a phone call from Tom tomorrow saying, yeah, well, thanks for Monday, Ian. We've, uh, <laughs> yeah. Don't need you to come in now. Change it's a plan. Yeah, it's, it's all all right. I've had those phone calls where you're booked for, like, t uh, two days or two weeks or something. And you Have do, you? Yeah, you do a bit. And then you get the phone call saying, yeah, well, hey, listen, now, thank you very much for last night. <laughs> Um, uh, it's not you, but, uh, we don't need you to come in, but I'm booked for tonight. You yeah, know, it's, it's fine. This, with the situation has, has, has changed, so mm. those, those calls are terrible. Mm. Oh, they're terrible. Uh, let's go to line, uh, five. Line five, you're on the wireless. Oh, uh, I wonder if you could help me with something. Yes. I, I, I'm in the middle of writing a book myself. Okay. I'm struggling with a particular point. The difference between affect and effect... Now, that's a very good question, because mm -hmm. I struggle with... Right, so, um, af affect and effect. Yeah. Jane, what do you think the differences are? I think um, affect is when you, when something... Affects you? Is that what you were actually going to say that, weren't you? <laughs> <laughs> you weren't going to say that, weren't you? Well, because I was, I, was, <laughs> I was trying to do this the other day, and I wanted to write yeah. um, with effect from... And I wrote it, first of all, I wrote it, effect, with an E. Yeah. And then I thought, hang on a minute, is it effect or affect? But I was right, wasn't I? It it is, wasn't that's effect. 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 Yes. Effect. So to say, if something's affect... I can, aff I can affect you... Mm hmm But it can affect me. No. No, I think it affects you. But why is it... Affection, not effection. Well, let's, hang on. Let's let's not get carried away with ourselves. We're struggling with with the very basic of affect <laughs> and effect here. Well, yeah, but, but you know, these are such literary terms that I needed to, to put in my book. What's what's your book about? It, it's 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 about um, it's about uh, prostitutes. Okay, and in what context? Can you give me the sentence? Yep. They like to affect the people around them. Oh, it doesn't help, does it? I think I think in that's that. Um, you, why don't you Why don't you put um, uh, influence? Oh, that's a good idea. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I, I'm glad that helps. Yeah. No, thanks. Thanks very much. Thank I'll, I'll send you. A... Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much. Okay. Uh, let's go to line six. Six. You're on the wireless. There was something worrying him tonight: a whisper in the wind, an unusually sharp chill in the air, and rip, no ripples making their way down the river Severn. 
wrote them stumbled home, aware that something wasn't quite right. Attributing this to his alcohol consumption, he stopped to vomit on a street corner. Playing his usual game, he used the light from the local haberdashers to pick out his most recent meals in this pile of undigested stomach contents, noting with great joy a chunk of steak and ale pie, a cornflake that was shaped like the head of Willie Fawn, and what you'd only presume to be one of his wife's or sister's genital hairs. Oh, for God's sakes, man. Line one, you're on the wireless. Hello, yes. Um, I just want to say I'm particularly enjoying your reading of Mansfield Park. Thank you. Which, uh... it's, it's actually inspired me to pick up an old musical I was writing many, many years ago and oh, continue yes. it. Yes. Um, yeah, well, would you mind, actually, if I sung you the first song? It's, it's about um, the area of North London called Kentish Town. Oh, I love Kentish Town, yes. yes, yes, yes I have it. <clears throat> we all live in a Kentish town, a very, 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 very Kentish town. Yeah, I see what you've done there. Very clever. Let's go to the Skype. Hello, Skype caller. Hi, it's Wayne again. Can I, can I carry on reading some of that Mansfield thing you're doing at the moment? Yep. OK. Well, the worst job I ever had was that Jay Mansfield, you know. Yeah. yeah. OK. He's just playing Derek and Clive to us, which is not helpful in the slightest. Um, if you want to call in, though, 2143 55 61 61. Email talk at playradiouk.com. Oh, yeah, that's why we're getting emails forwarded, because they're sending them to play too, aren't they, the emails? They are. Because they're idiots. Mm. It's talk at playradiouk.com is the mm -hmm. email address. Yes. And that's for, like, all of the shows here, is it? Yes. Well, here's it. Here, could you do me a favour, dear listener, and uh, email all the shows telling them that you think I'm brilliant and they should, like, like give me paid work here, you know. Uh, and you can Skype play.radio.uk if uh, you want to. We've got a call here. Let's go to, uh, who's this? Line one. Smirking as you remembered that night, he was soon taken aback as a shadow was cast over the sea, a shadow as dark as the night. Frozen with fear, he ruled it to be the burly barmaid from the stag blocking out the light. At least we'd be able to give her what she wanted, a quick trip up the dirt track and head home. The lack of smoke-infested breath sharing his airspace was a worry, and in his hearts of hearts, Ronan knew it was not Mabel. Turning around slowly, he was met by two burning eyes and hair. Oh, so much hair. Ronan took a huge gulp of oxygen, as though he had been transported back to the 1970s and his father's attempts to drown him in the bath before letting out a bone-chilling scream. It was the last noise he would ever make, as he was taken into a mouth, a mouth, a mouth, a mouth, a mouth. Yes, a mouth. OK, right, OK. But a Skype caller. Hello, Skype caller. <coughs> Hello? <coughs> Is that me? Well, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck the police. Da -da 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 -da. Fuck the police. Yeah. Da -da 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 -da. Right. yeah, OK, apart from that... What is, what's your I've been taking drugs today. Yeah. Can you guess which one? <laughs> Not gonna play. There's, that's <laughs> that's that's the thing you could do though, isn't it? Is is, uh, is never come back here and do a show again. It's um, <laughs> I've got eight minutes to fill, and I kind of just don't think they deserve the effort. I don't think they deserve. You don't. You're listening to this now at home on your computers uh, or, 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 in a podcast. You don't, des you don't deserve me. You don't deserve me. I, I am better than this and better than you. Uh, and so I'm, I'm actually... I've got to phone, uh, I'll phone Tom tomorrow and see if I can get out of um, tomorrow night. Because it's not really worth... It's not worth a two-and-a-half-hour drive for this. No. Horse shit. Mm. You know. I, I, I'm missing Crime Watch tonight. I've missed me on Watchdog. I've Sky Plus it, obviously. I'd be... Should be not to. Uh, I've missed uh, Ian Collins. Um, you know, a uh, bit Clive Ball. Can't get Clive Ball here. Got to wait to get back in London. And for for literally no, this has cost me money. Full full tank of petrol. Uh, I got got some sandwiches on the way down. Um, a couple of chocolate bars. It's cost me money. Mm -hmm. And it's just it's sort of not really worth it. If it's if everyone's just going to have a laugh and wasn't it funny and take the mick of it. So. Um, well, I've been enjoying your reading, and if I was doing English A level yeah. now, yeah. I would want to hear you read. How old are the A level girls? <laughs> uh, what, seventeen. Yeah. Would you have a bit of a crush? Me, think I was cool. Yeah, probably. Yeah, you just sound convinced. <laughs> 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 
Or was that not convincing? It wasn't, wasn't convincing. If I'm honest, no, it was very, most unconvincing. Okay. Okay, well, okay, let's, let's, let's enter that, that fantasy scenario. Mm-hmm. So, Jane. Yes. What's the book about? <laughs> I don't know. Oh, it's about a poor girl that goes it's and about, lives... It's about a fanny. <laughs> You're worse than them. This a is poor why, fanny. This is why no, the... I'm getting there. A poor fate. A poor, <laughs> a poor fanny. Yes. Who went to go and stay with a yeah. lady. With a lady. Bertram or... Do you, I have more sense if Alan Caddick was sat there talking to me. Do you know what I mean? He would have got it. Well, it's all these no, only work in radio. silly callers ringing up that, and you're, interrupting. Well, you're, you're encouraging them by... by am I? Yes. Why am I encouraging them? Because you've just got that... Vibe about you. Have I? Yeah, that says phone up and swear. <laughs> dis, dis, disrespect the police. There's nothing funny about disrespecting the police. No. Nothing funny about it at all. Line one, you're on the wireless. It was the mouth oh. of a giant mutant beaver. Go away. Line two, you're on the, the wireless. Hello there. Hello. How you diddling? Very well. Sorry, wrong station, sorry. OK, th- thanks very much. Uh, hello? Hello? What's up? Someone, someone doing a was up. So let's, let's just get this right. The highlight of the calls this evening have been uh, a was up man, someone playing pornography in the background, and <laughs> someone... Uh, uh, Chanting uh, disrespectful messages directed towards the police. Oh, we we have the uh, the effect and effect. Yeah, I, I'm quite um, I'm quite content because I've had my questions answered. <laughs> so it's not all been. So, but the, so Jean is saying aff- affect is a verb, mm-hmm. effect is a noun. What yeah. verb is a doing word? A noun yeah. is a thing, isn't it? Yes, you affect some. You affect something. The effect on something was. Oh, you've explained that well. Yeah, let's clear it up. <laughs> Everyone, I'm. Oh yes, ding! Thank you, Jane. That's that's made everything wonderful. <laughs> let's go to line one. Line one, you're on the wireless. Music. Hello. Bed music. I forgot to bring it. Should be some on the system. Well, there's, there isn't any for me, because uh, Matt Hollix phoned me up today and said, do you want any? I was just coming out of a spinning class. <laughs> do you want any? And they said, no, I'll bring some. I'll, I'll burn my own CD. And I did burn the CD, and then I had a doze, because I was watching Bad Boys, which is one of the worst films I've ever seen in my life. I've got to do a podcast tomorrow discussing Bad Boys. I've only seen the first 70, 67 minutes of it. Uh, and I fell asleep, and I forgot to pick up the disc with the beds. Hello? Oh, it says bored by... Uh, I was, I was uh, kind of bored by... Uh, so, um... So I've had another <laughs> explanation. OK, yes. <gasps> OK, Happy Tree says... Yeah. He affected an air of disgruntlement. Right. Or he was affected by the sharp petrol price increase. You're saying affected there, are you? Affect, okay. yes. The effect... Effect. 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 The effect was too much to bear. He... Effected. Effected. Right. All right. <laughs> he effected yeah. a nimble dodge. Is that a nimble dodge? To avoid getting caught. Effect can be a verb to effect change, for example, to make a change. But what does affect mean then? A noun is a thing, yeah. Now is a noun a noun is a thing. Yes. So like a keyboard Name. is a is a keyboard yeah. a noun. Keyboard is a noun. Yes. Mouse is a noun. Yes. Is it microphone a noun? Because you yeah. talk, you talk into it. Yeah, but the talking into it isn't the thing, is it? No, that's the the talking is a verb. Mm-hmm. But it ends in ing. Yeah, it's a verb. Are we any clearer? No, not no. not in the slightest. Not in, oh, look, there's, there's look, there's what's this email at the top? Ian, unfortunately, that's going to be um, <laughs> that's going to be disappointing reading. We do not study anything like Mansfield Park at A level. At AS level, we are doing Jane Eyre, and A two don't do anything like that. So no, we would not be learning anything at all. Well, well okay. The um, for everyone, uh, I'm going to stop reading the book here, and I'm going to take this home, and I'm going to read this in my my leisure. For everybody um, who was enjoying the book, um, not not that one, no. Oh well, let's let's tell that one. Let's see, let's see. Yes, uh, uh, hello, Skype caller. 
Hello? <laughs> yes, okay. <laughs> For everyone who was enjoying the uh, the book, you have my sincerest apologies. And uh, maybe if you hey, if you go to ianlee.com, maybe I'll put up a podcast of me um, reading it there because I think really think this is something um, that, that, that that could be fine to apologise. It looks like we're not going to finish the book. We're not going to uh, even start properly. Great expectations, which is uh, great shame. Let's just quickly get rid of these calls here. Line one, you're on the wireless. Microphone is an adjective because it describes something similar to cock. Or no. vagina. Okay. Being thank both descriptive words. Yep, okay. thank you very much. Okay, let's, uh... I'm actually going to start... I've got, I've got two minutes, Jane, but I'm just going to start packing up now, if that's all right. Are you? Well, I don't really feel... There's no... You uh, feel a bit disappointed. I'm a bit gutted. I suppose tomorrow I have to come back and just fanny about and it's all called straight to air and everyone being... Ooh, look, ooh, Pradeep, ooh, Ryan Reynolds, I've got a dirty bum, all of this stuff. Which just doesn't, you know, it doesn't feel like there's any... Chat, have you noticed my wallet? It just doesn't feel like there's any challenge to that. I don't think anyone can do that. It's a piece of piss doing that, really, so... I was looking forward to Great Expectations. Yeah, no, so was I. So was I, Jane. So was I. It's not gonna... I'd quite like a bit of Pip. Yeah, they, they, Tommy said that about you, actually. That's, uh... Did he? Yeah. So. Are you off then? I'm, well, I'm, uh, yeah, I might as well. <laughs> I know. I just, I've got a long drive back and, um, I thought, let's just, just rattle through these calls very quickly. We've got 30 seconds. Let's go to. Yes, line one. Have you set the timer for the wire tonight? No, I, I don't like the wire. What? I, well, I watched the first three episodes. I didn't get it. All that, that sort of lesbian slang. I didn't understand it. Seriously, from f about five episodes on, it's slow, but it gets really good. Well, they should make it good from the start. Oh, yeah. Ryan Reynolds! Got it. Yeah, you will get it, sunshine. Yeah. No, that is a threat. That's actually a threat. Big lube. Yeah, no, not a sex threat. It's actually a threat to kick the shit out of you. You're a little prick. Hey. You're a little prick, Rob. You name the time. The I will place. name the time. The time will be soon. The, the place will be your face. You're a little I'll prick, Rob. I'll your buffy hair off. I'll get stuffed. I'm going to ruin your wedding. I'll get stuffed. <laughs> Hello, this is Get Down, Mick Brown. Join me every Saturday evening from 9...